All right, hey, shalom, family. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in Yahweh's sight. He is our strength and our redeemer. And it is in his name, which is his authority, that we pray, praise, proclaim, protect, and protect this message. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us. Again, as we get ready to go into today, and um, just making sure that we making sure that we pull up podcast family and get them on before we get into this. We're thankful for everybody who's watching this on YouTube and uh, TikTok and Facebook. Um, and uh, we'll. have IG on a little later. Amen. However, we, as always, we give all praise and honor to the Most High. Uh, we give all praise to him from my wife, the Honorable Maya, who lives a life to say, but to be honored. We give praise to him um, for my family, for um, our, our people, for those who are grafted in, and therefore, our people, <laughs> for um, those who agree with us, disagree with us, SOC, not SOC, whatever the case might be, we're thankful for you all. If you, if, if this is your first time, we're on live every rising 8 a.m. Eastern New York time. Um, we're on every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern New York time. Um, for those of you who are with us, um, on Patreon, if you're patr patrons, uh, remember that today we're going to have a special live just for you all. So uh, we're excited about that, that you'll be able to join us for a live just for you. And um, we'll see how it works. We're testing it out as far as it's the first time we're actually going to be executing using that pl uh, using that particular uh, platform, at least quite for quite first time in quite some time. So we're thankful and grateful for what the Most High is going to do as far as that. And we're looking forward to that and um, executing uh, that very well, very soon. Um, hello, everybody coming on. Minister Select Sonia, Breezy, Sister Tracy, Minister Tamara, Big Brother Thomas, how you doing? Skettles, hello. To everybody who's coming in, everybody on Facebook, hey, I see you, Lori. Thank you for being on with us. Hopefully you're doing well. Shalom, Sister Deborah. Everybody on all the platforms, we're thankful and grateful to have you all with us today. Um, and thank you for spending more time with us. So, um, today, we are going to be uh, speaking on um, Protect Us. Protect who? Protect Us. And moderators, you know, thank you for what you do because probably going to need you guys to be ready. Hello, Ms. Mack, how you doing? Because uh, this is a touchy subject because people see a black man or an Israelite man or a man who is a POC, a native man, whatever it is that you want me to identify as, a Rastafari, <laughs> etc. All these things that I am, a Taino, an Omek uh, uh somebody who is proficient um, with verbal guanine, if you know what I'm talking about, um, a gullah, a uh, griot, uh, many different things that I carry, Ghanaian, Shwe, African, etc. And they hear him say, protect us. And people try to take their culture and superimpose it on us. So they hear that, they go, oh, okay, he must be one of these black people was angry, this, that, or whatever, which is not the case at all, right? This is not an angry black man speech. This is something where I'm telling you that you need to learn how to protect yourself before you protect others. And this is what I mean by that. If you cannot protect you, Grand Rising, Sister Beverly, how you doing? If you cannot protect you, how are you going to protect somebody else? protect us. There's some serious stuff we're going to talk about today. Like I said, moderators, I appreciate you in advance because, um, you know, be, just be ready. It seems like they've been allowing us to get our numbers back up and stuff again. Um, we're jumping right in with this today. Protect us. Right? Protect us. 
Okay, kangaroo, witchcraft is evil. We would agree with that. Yashua HaMashiach is Lord for us. I have no problem with that. Once again, we protect us, right? And and right off the bat, like I just said, somebody's going to come in and speak from the place of, uh, or at least I don't know, maybe, but it seems like it's coming from somebody else's thing. I'm going to make sure I interject what I believe right from the back. And you got to learn how to what? Protect us. How you doing, Brother TJ? Right? And people are going to get in a place where they don't want to, they don't want you to be yourself, right? Now, here's the thing that's interesting. Hey, Grand Rising Marion, how you doing? Here's the thing that's interesting, right? Shalom, Shires. Which one of you would get in a relationship with somebody where you feel like that person wouldn't have your back? How you doing, Tiffany? Thank you for being part of the community. Which one of us out there, right, would get in a relationship? I'm not saying you never have been, right? But let's say it like this. Which one of you think it's smart? Which one of you think it's intelligent to be in a relationship with somebody who will not protect you? Welcome in, Brother Cole. Thanks for being on, right? I hear people see, right? Not me. Nope. Yeah. Across the board, right? You wouldn't, you don't get in a relationship with somebody where you don't feel like you're protected. So if you're trying to get with a group of people who aren't even protecting themselves, how well do you think they'll protect you? See, Israel, there's a reason why you must be first sealed before you can start talking about graphing in and, and, and being with everyone else, right? If you're not in the place of being able to protect yourself, you're not good enough to protect somebody else. Right? The Most High protects us. He's the only one we can trust, sure. But Most High also tells us, Revelation chapter 12, make sure that we separate ourselves so that when Ad Satan is sending the people, right, that's shooting that water, water represents people, right, in, that, in the dream, in the vision, in Revelation, whatever, right, when he says that we're sending these people at you, you got to be in a place of protection, right? You got to be in a position where you, what, can protect self, even if it's using the law, using the word, using love, using mercy, using grace, whatever it is, you got to make sure you're protected. Just Lori, you said not you as well. Yeah, but we, but, and, and I'm just being honest with you. I personally, right, can't be in a relationship with anybody. I've tried that, to be in a relationship with somebody who you got to protect them. You got to make sure they feel all right. You got to make sure they're lifted up. You got to make sure that you're making them feel great, this and that, everything, right? But then when you need a shoulder to cry on, it's, it's, it's non-existent, <laughs> right? Um, that's not a great relationship to be in. I tried to do that. It didn't work out so well. Hey, how you doing, uh, Sister Kendra? Let's see if I can remember these names, right? Well, if you, you, you're saying, right? You're, you're saying that you want somebody to protect you, the government who's never protected you, you want them to protect you. You're saying you want somebody to protect you, right? You're, you're, you're saying that you want some law to protect you. These laws that they're making up and trying to pervert, right? They haven't been living by those laws all this time. If somebody's not able to protect me, I'm not really trying to be in a relationship. My wife will protect you. Some of you have seen it. My wife is very nice. She's behind the scenes and stuff. But some of y'all have seen on some of the Zooms or even on some things every once in a while where she'll come out and she'll say something and then she'll say, yeah, you know, I'm not very trusting sometimes. And she, what she's saying is, is that um, I love my husband and I love my husband and because I love him, I'm not going to allow you, I'm not going to allow anything to come up in here. Even if you're supposed to be a friend, nothing's coming up in here that's going to mess up us, right? She's showing protection. And I love her for that. I honor her for that. Right? <laughs> you know? Like, so she would make sure that there's certain things where, hey, we might be cool, this and that, but then all of a sudden, if she feels the slightest thing, she doesn't, she doesn't, I'm not talking about, she, she, if she feels the slightest thing, that's what she's supposed to do. That's what I'm supposed to do. Right? If she's going somewhere, we're going somewhere, and she feel, and I feel like somebody's doing something that's a threat to her, I need to make sure that I say something or make sure I stand in between or I make sure that somebody knows if you think this is going to just be you going to say something, then that's going to be it. Or you're going to do something and she's going to back down or whatever you think that because you're a man and you're going to try and make her feel, uh, you know, un uncomfortable. Like I'm a man up and I'm going to let you know, right? That's not toxic. 
that's straight up masculinity right and i'm a i'm a spoon feed it to you forcefully if necessary because you're not going to mess with my wife right right so you got to be able to protect yours if she's in a relationship with somebody she doesn't think is going to protect her in that situation you know what's going to happen she needs to leave because that's not a marriage or we have or right because the only marriage that's legal in our culture anyway is between a husband and a wife you got to be pre-qualified if you're not pre-qualified to be in a marriage then you're not really in a marriage in the first place you see it all the time people get in a relationship and one person comes to the truth one person doesn't want to be in the truth it becomes a very difficult marriage you know why because it's not marriage now you can change it into marriage and do some things to be able to try and help and make sure that you know the unbelieving spouse can move over and forgiveness can be given and you know you can do all these things but if it's not it's not marriage if you're not ready to go to bat for that person until death do us part sickness and health all these things that people like to say but don't execute right so i'm just telling you i'm not i'm not making this a thing of oh, you know, this is all against all white people or anybody that ain't black or anybody that's not Israel or anybody that's not a Moor or anybody that's whatever term you want to um, label yourself today. What I'm saying is, is that in my personal experience, I'm not going to be around somebody who can't protect myself. There are people who are not as kingdom-minded. They're, they're, they're becoming kingdom-minded, but there are people that I'm around that are not as kingdom-minded as some of us on here and not as so... Um, hyper spiritual, you know, as a lot of us want to be on here. However, right, hypercrite, not hypocrite, hypercrite, right? If you know the difference, hyper means lives above, hypo means, means underneath, right? So they are hyperchrists, they live above the stand, they do all this. You know, there's some people that I roll from time to time that aren't there because I'm not only here for the people who know the truth, we're here for the lost too, right? However, there are some of those people that you would consider not to be as spiritually minded as you. I'm going to take them certain places that I'm not going to take some of us. You know why? Because some of the places that I'm going, I know that I might have somebody that might try to do something crazy. And these dudes aren't crazy, but these dudes are ready. <laughs> you know? So there's certain neighborhoods I go into. There's certain spots I go into D.C. where I know that I can call certain cats if I go to Southeast or whatever. And tell them, hey, you need to let so-and-so know I'm be coming to their area to help some people and make sure that they got my back. Because while you're only concerned about, um, yeah, you know, the Most High is going to protect you, this and that or whatever, Most High also says to consider the cost. He also says to make sure that we um, are an assembly. He also says to make sure that we utilize the talents and the gifts. And if somebody's talent and gift is, hey, you know what, I'm a frontline soldier, then I'm going to use a frontline soldier. Like there's some cats that um, I've talked to and stuff. And they and they're and it's hard to get them even to deal with us because they're always talking about, oh man, you moving too slow, you moving too slow, right? <laughs> you know, they're saying you moving too slow because they're always ready to fight. That's that's their calling. They they're better at being on the front line. They're not concerned about being in charge or anything. They're not concerned about what people think about them. They're not concerned. They, you know, some of these people who call me up and be like, hey, you know what? Like, we need to make sure we protect you. And I don't really be thinking about that. But they have a mindset like, hey, if you're going to be in charge of some of these things we're doing, like, we got to protect you, bro. You can't be out here, you know, talking to these people. You can't be out here literally over and over and over again getting shut down and building back up and being shut down and building back up on all these media platforms. And stuff. People have a disdain for you. They say you got to be protected. They tell me your wife got to be protected. They say your children got to be protected. <laughs> right? You know? And I'm not trying to put myself on everybody else's level. Every person is their own person, right? But I'm just saying, like, you know, when Malcolm X died, Malcolm X died, and his bodyguard still cries to this day because he'll tell you that he told Malcolm that he felt like he needed to protect him. And Malcolm said, no, don't worry about it. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm all right. And he cries to this day. You know why? Because he didn't protect him. I'm not. I'm not trying to say. I'm just trying. I'm, I'm trying to just get you to comprehend. Overall, we're so used to we got to protect everybody else. Let's protect the American ideal. What has the American ideal done for you? And hello to everybody coming on. How you guys doing? Christine said, "I think I offended someone yesterday with a comment made." And sorry, it wasn't personal. Oh, okay. Well, whoever Christine is um, apologizing to. She didn't mean it. <laughs> I don't believe she meant it. And thank you. That, you know, that shows your heart. If it's on your heart that you would even say that. We appreciate you, right? That's why I have a lot of stuff out there where we protect what? Black men and black women. 
Because if, if who's going to protect you? He said, love, they know and live in their being, protect you. Hello, is it, I don't know if I'm going to say this right, Kidapella? Uh-oh, Kidapella and somebody else was in the, oh, and Kenny. Or no, Ken, Kenya. Kenya, right? Kenya the Lester. Hopefully I said that correctly. Right? So, and shalom, chef, shalom to everybody. Everybody's coming in on all the different platforms. We appreciate you, right? Um, you know, but we got to, we got to protect us. You're not, you're not okay. You're not okay to protect anybody if you can't protect yourself. This is why we've been talking about sovereignty. This is why we've been talking about micronations. This is why we've been talking about law. This is why we say when you're reading the Bible, you got to understand it's law and case study, right? You've got to learn how to protect you. Matter of fact, you've got to learn how to protect you even before you protect us. Last time I said it correct? Okay, I'll try to remember which one I said. Um, you said we have to protect our own. How you doing, Erdogan? You said no one else is going to do it. Yeah. Said when we say we want to protect us, others will say we're causing division. Yeah, that's what I said from the beginning. Matter of fact, just because I look the way I look, you know, and I'm not even wearing some of the more Afrocentric clothing that I, you know, wear, uh, but just because of the way that I look and I would say protect us, it's automatic. And I told, told people that would happen and immediately... Like, as soon as I said it, somebody was already in the comment section ready to start talking about it, right? You know, you, you got to protect yourself before you can even protect us. Right? That's that's why we got to make sure our children are sound in who they are. Hey, how you doing, Patricia? We need to make sure that our children are sound in who they are. And they know who they are so that they'll begin to protect themselves and therefore realize, well, if they come from you, then they got to protect you, too. That's how it works. You protect us. This is why we use so much etymology and geography and geology and astrology, even and whatever we can use. Right. To be able to show people that we are uh, who we said we are. And if you recognize who we are and you recognize the oneness of who we are and you recognize that all creation has to deal with who we are. Then you get to a place to where it's like, well, they can't be anything without us. And technically, technically, we can't be anything without them as far as at least humanity. Now, we know that there's some people that are going to dismiss that principle. And for them, there are consequences, right? There are consequences that come to people who will not come together. But you got to protect us. Amen. I hear you. So and she said, I'm a protector. Yelva says, I feel like us Israelites are always being attacked and looked at as a cult. Yeah, and by the way, even when somebody says you're a cult, what does that mean? You know, go ahead and protect us, right? When somebody says that you're a cult, you're in a cult. Cult is just a culture. Okay. I'm in a cult. All right, I'm in a culture. You know, the United States Corporation is a cult. You know, look up what the word doctrine is, especially in Black's Law Dictionary. You'll discover that doctrine doesn't have anything to do with religion. If you believe anything, if you uphold any belief, you uphold a doctrine by definition. Because you want to get mad at me? Because my doctrine is something that says that I should be, I should make sure that the word of Yah is spoken correctly from the proper mentality, from the proper culture. If that makes me part of a cult, okay. <laughs> I mean, okay, like, you know, if, if me saying that my people hanging from trees is bad and that you guys shouldn't be excited with yourselves because you finally said you protect us in 2021 by saying it's a federal crime to hang from a tree even though you put a whole bunch of stuff in there to still say that there's levels to hanging somebody from a tree like if you if you're there right and want to keep cursing my people because curses any man that's hanging from a tree and you want to keep doing that all right but if i call it evil if I call it racist and you want to say I'm, the, I'm, I'm into racism because or I created racism because there's no such thing as racism. But once I mentioned racism, then now I'm the reason that racism exists. And you want to say that that's a cult. Fine. But that's your cult. That's your culture. Your culture waits for me to say something factual, contextually factual, right? Contextual facts. And as soon as I say some contextual facts, your culture just says, oh, we go ad hominem. We don't even use proper apologetics. We don't even use any kind of proper argument. We just run at you and we just tell you that you ain't nothing. So, okay, you in a cult? I'm in a cult. Which one is going to give us the results that my people need? You had me in your cult since I was in preschool. 
you had me in your cult since I was two. You had me in your cult since you had my parents sign something to say that I give rights away by being a straw man, right? And, or to identifying with a straw man, a birth certificate, and identifying with social security number, which, by the way, is illegal for me to even use a social security card as a form of identification. But you kept doing it. That's your cult that you wanted me to be part of. But to, see, it's not the cult part that you got to see, right? We got to protect ourselves. It's not the cult. It's not the cult. They're fine with you being in their cult. Remember Willie Lynch, he said it plainly, right? He said that basically anybody who is not civilized is defined as somebody who's wild. Why do they consider to be wild or savage, savage, right? Savage means wild, right? Savage, en français, um, or, you know, uh, means wild, right? So why are they saying you're wild or you're savage? They're saying because you don't fit into their civilization. If you don't fit into their civilization, then they consider you to be an animal. That's why Black's Law Dictionary, if you say yourself, call it, consider yourself to be human, they say the definition for that, they don't even have it written anymore. They say C-S-E-E, -E, C monster. Go look at what the definition of monster is if you don't want to know what a human is. If you look at the definition of monster, they take away all your rights because they say, hey man, you're somebody that's dangerous to the system. That's their cult. That's their cult. <laughs> That's the cult that they want to be. Thank you for the agreement, Sister Seamus. Thank you for the agreement, TJ. Right? <laughs> Thanks for the agreement, you guys, everybody. You said some people are ignorant to what they don't understand. Yeah, but, and, but it, it, you're in a cult. You're in a cult that says that you shouldn't question. People talk about the Bible, oh, what well, you don't want to know. No, my Bible says try every spirit by the spirit. It's a cult. It's a culture. How you doing, Sister Helen? Hello, Fatima. Or I don't know if it's Fatima, Fatima. Thanks for being on with us. Right? It's a cult. You said that's what, what they call people, or my people, savage, right? And you got your own people saying I'm a savage. Right. Well, if you're going to be a savage, just understand what you're saying is I don't fit into the system. If you're going to try to be about their system, though, and you keep saying you're a savage, then they're like, yeah, you are a savage. Uh, so you don't really fit in. But keep on making those songs, though. Keep on showing up to, you know, what, what's her name? I don't even remember the name of the girl who made the song. You know, I'm a savage, you know, you know, ratchet, whatever, bougie, whatever. The, the, I, I don't I don't know the words, <laughs> you know, but um, Lizzo, Lizzo. They may be like, okay, Lizzo, yeah, go ahead out here. Go ahead, take your flute to show that you can go ahead and play. But then make sure you twerk it while you're playing that flute. As long as you keep playing the game and be savage, so you, everything's all right. <laughs> as long as you keep playing that flute, but you show some savagery, we're all right with you showing that you have some kind of intelligence. But you got to make sure that that intelligence goes, is, is, is tempered by, by savagery. Amen. Can you say words mean things? I have been slow to speak since I've joined the community, a lot to learn. Oh, yeah, feel free to speak, though. And we appreciate it. We appreciate you being part of us. You know? What is a cult? Now, now, a cult can be, they, they define a cult a little differently, but I'm just trying to tell you, like, doing simple etymology, a cult is part culture. You know, technically, when they, you know, do the little experiments and stuff, and they, they said, we're going to go ahead and look at the culture or whatever, they're looking at a cult. The culture is basically what the cult has grown into. So every culture basically starts off as a cult or is one and the same as a cult. So you want to call me a cult? Okay, call me a cult. Now, now that you've finished calling me a cult, though, let's, let's do some comparisons real quick because we're going to protect us. So let's do some comparisons. In my cult, how many of us, how many of you on here know of anybody that's part of SOC? I'm not saying it won't ever happen. Because we're all, we, you know, we all make mistakes, right? However, how many of you on here have heard of anybody in this cult who has been arrested for murder, right? How many of you have heard of anybody in here who's doing anything as far as uh, putting their hands on people inappropriately? How many of you have heard people on here that's part of this culture to where, you know, we have a problem with cussing somebody out? How many lives have you been on to where I've told people that they're evil just because of the color of their skin. How many times have people came on here and said negative things and called me the N-word and said different things? And, and I'm talking about you got to go back, not just to this channel, but the two channels they took down before this on TikTok, the one channel they took down before this on YouTube, <laughs> you know, the stuff that we had on Facebook, um, the stuff that's been on the podcast. Well, on podcast, we haven't had too much because 
Um, you know, we're just starting to grow as far as numbers on there. But, you know, like, like you go and look at all these places. You haven't seen anything in this cult. Now, flip it. What has your cult done? How long have I been freeforming? For a while, I actually messed around and cut it, I think, like, four years ago, three years ago or something like that. So it should be twice as much, and I felt terrible when I did it. I was trying to see about getting a contract for something, and I should have just been myself. I, from, you know, um, I was trying to do something for the family, and, you know, I sinned. <laughs> um, you know, so, uh, but, yeah, I, I don't know. It's been a little bit now. Right? You say, yeah, you've never seen anything like that ever. You've never seen any of that stuff on this platform. You've never seen anything like this on this platform. Why? Because that's our culture. It's to make sure that we love. We even pray for those who despitefully use you. We don't get used by those. Right? But we pray for those who would try to despitefully use us. But we ain't going to just allow it. If we know what's about to happen, we just ain't going to allow you to use us. The Most High uses us. If the Most High tells us to do something, then even if you feel like you're using us, we're aware of it, but the Most High says, hey, I got something for you, and I'm going to protect you on your way through, right? For those who are taking Hebrew characters with us, it sounds like what we talked about last night in Psalm 119. Oh, there it is. Right? We were talking about the Most High of Psalm 119 going through our Hebrew characters. You know, but you've never seen that with us. You've never seen us say that because you're a Republican or a Democrat, you're a bad person. You've never seen that with us. But you see that in their cult. You've never seen us talk about the right or the left because we're whole. We ain't trying to be on the right or the left. Why would you be only on only right or only left? Doesn't make sense. Why would you want to walk and lean to one side? That's incompletion. That's imperfection. He said, if your mind is truly free, why would you adopt the English language to describe you? I mean, I get it. If you, the only thing that you know is the English language, <laughs> then, you know, you're going to use that which you describe. But then again, we get into interesting stuff like that, you know, which that's a that goes down another rabbit hole. But, you know, if you're talking about that, like the English language is not the is not Anglo or Anglo. It's English. So there's a lot of Kemetic stuff in there. There's a lot of Kiswahili stuff in there. There's a lot of Israelite stuff in there. There's a lot of Hebrew stuff in there because not all Hebrews are Israelites, although all Israelites are Hebrews, right? There's a lot of um, native stuff in there, you know? Um, we just went, I'm gonna put some pictures up on um, Patreon. I'm a little behind on posting. I have the stuff ready to go. I just haven't posted it yet. But um, we, you know, I took some pictures of a place that we went to as a family where we went on uh, Mississippian land. A lot of people think Mississippian land is only in Mississippi. The original people of Mississippi had way more territory, you know, or people talk about the people of Massachusetts, but the people of Massachusetts, they are not the people of Massachusetts. Or people talking about Americans, but if you know the history of America, even look up Black Law Dictionary of what the original American was, the original American is you. And they lied and got you to sign off eventually. They had to keep fighting you, and some people haven't fought off, by the way, or signed off. That's why they're in these little territories, you know, these little camps that you have for Native people all over, you know. But a lot of people finally just signed off and said, okay, you know, we'll we'll just go ahead and say that you're, you know, that 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 uh, you know you're you're the people, so we can stop having you guys beat up upside the, beat us upside the head, <laughs> right? Hey, how you doing, Tamika? Thank you for being part of the community, Siren. You said the elevation. I'm sorry, I missed what you were talking about, Tiffany. I can't remember what you were talking about at the time. You said, is it Hebrew or spiritual? Is what Hebrew or spiritual? Uh, we, Hebrew is, Avra, by the way, is the original term. Hebrew wasn't even the way you said it, but um, Hebrew people have a certain culture and they carry a certain type of spirituality, you know? He said, what is my opinion on the murder slash extortion of the nation of Yehafa and murder of Joy Morgan? I don't know Joy Morgan off the top of my head, and I'm sorry. Um, I don't have an opinion on murders and extortion. Murders, murder and extortion is sinful, and it's disgraceful, and it's something that we need to make sure that we are prepared for as much as possible. That's why we're working on our land and micronation and things like that, and behind the scenes, we help a lot of people with a lot of things. Um, give it a lot of legal advice, things like that. Well, we don't give legal advice per se, right? That's not legally how we're supposed to say it. But we make sure that we help people comprehend 
how sovereignty works. So we don't get you right, <laughs> you know. Um, however, yeah, like that's it's straight up wrong, despicable, um, and you know, really, we talk about that all the time. We we've been taken, we were taken away from self. We don't even know um, how many Israelite or um, Alpha or Hebrew, <clears throat> Paleo Hebrew, even things are on you know in the Americas, um, especially in places like like I was just talking about Mississippi or Georgia or the Carolinas. Um, and and you know we don't we don't think about those things or whatever. But also you know as part of the Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy twenty eight, it's um, stuff that we brought. By the way, <clears throat> when people talk about the curses, the curses don't just show up randomly. The curses show up because we have some responsibility. You know it says if you hearken. That's how Deuteronomy twenty eight starts off, right? If you, if you, right? You is by the way when they say thee thine thus in the Bible, we can talk about that. You know even somewhat ancient Anglo. Um, you know, the thee, thy, and thus is always meaning an individual. But it, but there it doesn't say if thee. It says if you, as a group, if you would hearken unto the voice of Yahweh Elohim, right, to observe and to do all these things that have been commanded you, then you'll be blessed in all these places. But only if, right, that's basically 1 through 14. But when you get to verse 15, it starts saying, however, if you decide you're not going to listen, <laughs> you know, you got some issues coming. I'm sorry, Patricia, you said, oh, kingdom mindset and living not right or left. Yeah. Velvet said, anytime they see an individual that's Hebrew being violent, they think we're all that way. Very much so. So once again, do your actions protect your community? And by the way, this is why we say something too often. They are not our standard. My standard is not, how does America look at you? And that blesses me. Right? It blesses us. If somebody black... Hebrew, Israel, Native, Taino, Omec, Moor, etc. If somebody does something, um, if their standard is, we're going to say black man does, right? However, if somebody who's not, like, doesn't look like you, doesn't, they're just going to say a man did. They're not going to say white man did. They're going to say man did, right? Well, then, if that's their standard, that I'm going to get caught up in that. Oh, another black man did this. Another black man did that. But if my standard is every individual within our society has the ability to sin, that's why we all have the ability to forgive. And that's why we all have the ability to repent. If I look at it like that, then I don't go, oh, there's another. Like sometimes it's difficult not to do that, right? Like, oh, there's another black man doing that. Oh, there's another pastor doing that. Oh, my goodness. You know, like it's, it's, it is it is hard sometimes, right? And, and it's frustrating because I'm somebody who's supposed to be a leader of an environment. And so I set up an environment. I tell people we're all doing what we're supposed to do. And then I got looking. Oh, man, somebody doing that again. Somebody cheated on their wife again. <laughs> you know, John Gray did what? <laughs> you know? I, it, it is hard to do those things, but if I recognize and realize that that's not my standard, and my standard is to make sure that those who have decided to come together and have decided to start coming out of her, and we have a lifeline called the word that we use to be able to allow people to come out of, of, the, of her, out of Babylon the Great, that sits upon the scarlet beast, right, that comes out of the people and out of the water, right, then it changes my perspective. See, their perspective that they and that this is the part of their culture they want to be take on. Their culture says, hey, because you're, that person's black, they did it. That's why it has to be black man did. Remember, some of y'all have read that famous article now, right? Where there's a, they have two pictures, or well, I don't know if they were actually side by side, but somebody put two different articles, two different pictures from a magazine side by side, and they show the headlines. And one, right from back in, um, with uh, Hurricane Katrina, right? And there's one family that's coming out Right, or there's a, a white, a white couple that's coming out, and it just says, uh, you know, and they have food, and they're coming out of a store during the storm, or do, you know, and they literally have the water up like up to their chest, and they're holding the food above themselves, trying to get out of there and trying to get back to safety, and it says, oh yeah, you know, um, it says couple trying to find food, you know, during the storm, right? But then there's a black. I don't know if it was a couple or a man. But there's a black there's black people basically coming out and they're coming through the water and they got the food and what does it say above them? You know, basically call them thugs. 
<laughs> these thugs are doing these things. You say if, yeah, it's a big word. Yeah, most definitely. That's contract, by the way, contractual speech. If you do this, then I'll do this. It's contract. Sir Timothy said spiritual is soul core work that takes lessons, could harm or help. The enlightenment is de derivative. I mean, sounds, yeah, well, you know, the soul or the spirit. Spirit is what? Pneumatical thought. Stoic thought that marries the spirit, the soul, and the body together. Uh, the soul is actually, you know, the psyche, 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 psychology, the study of the soul. Um, and then you have the physio physiology, right? Or you have the physical person, the study of the physical person. All three are supposed to be working together um, properly as far as the spirit. That's why it says that the flesh is weak, but the spirit, or the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. The flesh really has to be guided by something. And so the flesh through the soul is trying to figure out spiritually what's going on. So you got to have that spirit, spirit man together. But we have to protect our mindset and our culture as far as that, because there's a bunch of spirits that come in. So we got to protect us. That's the theme, if you will. That's the motif. That's the title, if you will, for today. It's to protect us. You know, back in the day, we used to just play play ball. Somebody might yell out something like, we must protect this house. <laughs> right? I don't know if any of y'all remember that. That was a big thing that everybody used to say back in the day. Right? They were saying that, you know, if somebody coming into your spot, you in a battle. This ain't just, you know, they were trying to get you to think this just ain't a basketball game. This just ain't a football game. You got to protect this house. This is our house. How are you going to let somebody else come into your house and score 50 on you? That's disrespect. How are you going to let somebody set a record on you? I don't care if your team is sorry. You get, they ain't going to make us look sorry today. We might be sorry, but they ain't going to make us look sorry. <laughs> right? Because we protect ourselves. He loves his knowledge and checks his ruin in the world. What's my opinion? Not you, but many run them up. Well, I mean, I mean, and you have a right to challenge anything I'm saying. I'm not trying to say don't challenge me or whatever, but, you know, like, um, you know, we test every spirit by the spirit. Once again, I'm not opinionated, right? So I'm going to give you contextual facts. Um, if you're talking about people are running the muck or knowledge unchecked, you know, people perish for a lack of knowledge. And that's what the goal of any enemy is to do. Can we speak on that in protection? You know, I've been in the United States military. Um, I've, I've fought with a, with a weapon. Uh, whether it be a baton, whether it be a um, an M16, whether it be an M60, uh, whether it was with a Beretta, whatever, right? I've I've been in situations, I've been in battle, I've been on guard duty, I've done different things of that nature. I battled for my family, I've um, warred in the spirit, all these different things. But I'll talk specifically from military perspective. Um, people perish for a lack of knowledge. Knowledge is the key. The word knowledge, by the way, means intimacy. To know something is to be intimate. That's why the Bible, when it talks about two people becoming married and having sex, it always says, you know, he knew her. She knew him. Right? That's why a lot of times, um, like if you come down south to certain places, they don't really say, oh, yeah, I know her or I know him. Because if you say I know her, you're trying to say, oh, like, <laughs> you know, um, you know, you try. it's like you're trying to say, um, oh, you know, blah, blah, yeah, not in our house. I see you, you know, same type of mindset, right? But when you when you go in to fight somebody, they give you intel. Intel is information, intelligence, right? And you're hoping that your intel is better than what the enemy has. And you're hoping that you can be silent and make sure that you can't be seen, right? So that you, they won't have any info about you. That's what's going to win the battle. That's what's going to win the war is inf information. Whoever is the most informed is the person who is the most rich, Information is part of wealth. People get paid for information. That's what you get paid for. You get paid for time. You get paid for information. That's what you get paid for. That's why somebody can do less manual work than you, but they get paid more. You know why? Because you might be doing manual work, but maybe all you know is to work that one machine. But that person who has to look over the whole thing, they have more pressure because they have to know how 80 machines are working at the same time. They're going to pay them because of information and they're going to pay them because of time invested to be able to get that information. You can pay for time and information. And what's happening around the world is you got a lot of people trying to talk about things and act like you're knowledgeable, which means you're able to be intimate with something, able to know, knowledgeable, right? But at the same time, you are intimate with it. You're acting like you are. That's why they call that there's something called Dunning-Kruger effect, D-U-N-I-N-G. Um, K-R-U-G-E-R effect, Dunning-Kruger effect, effect with an E. 
right? Um, you think that you, you're, you're speaking on something without actually knowing the culture of something. You're, you're preaching on something, you're teaching on something, you're, you're analyzing something, you're coming on somebody's social media and telling them that they're wrong about something, you're looking at somebody how they look visually, you're getting into a marriage without understanding that marriage must be consummated. So you've been having sex with somebody, not realizing that basically you've been in an illegal marriage. But they don't, you know, and you don't believe that, and you say, oh, he's just on his spiritual thing, he's just on his Israelite thing, he's just on that biblical tip, whatever. But you don't even look at the law that says that if you get married and don't have sex and somebody comes back to a judge and says that you don't have sex, your marriage will be annulled because it never counted. So when you're having sex with person after person after person, literally becoming one, literally DNA swapping, literally DNA forming with one another, Right? That actually happens. You have sex with somebody and your DNA starts to become one with somebody else's. You share DNA memory. Right? That this is this is this is but somebody else's culture is trying to tell you, don't worry about it. Don't worry about marriage. Don't worry about their lifestyle. Don't worry about what the most high said. Don't worry about this, that, or whatever. Don't worry. No, no, that's somebody else's culture. And said, if the world looks acceptable in your eyes, you are probably not a child of Elohim. Yeah. But, all, all, you know, a lot of people are ignorant. You said, however, it's free will. Uh, we are allowed to come and go. You're allowed to do whatever you want as far as free will, but there's consequences for whatever you do. Adam and Eve were allowed to eat of the fruit. There's consequences we're still dealing with. You're allowed to go ahead and add, add you know, you have to write to add to um, what the Most High says, to add to Revelation. You know, a lot of people say, I'm going to give a prophetic word about Revelation. Revelation is a prophetic word. You're allowed to add to it, but it also says there's a consequence. If you add to it, the plays will be added to it. You're allowed to take away from it, but it says if you take away from it, <laughs> there's consequences, right? Your name will be removed from the Book of Life. You know, but we're dealing with time and knowledge. That's what you get paid for. And, and, and so our pay is spiritual advancement. Our pay is eternal. My, my pay is that my wife and I are one. My pay is that my family is taken care of. My pay is that I see you guys improving. My pay is that um, we seem to be doing something that strikes a chord around the world. Uh, my pay is that, you know, I become more sovereign. My pay is that I uh, become more um, advanced as far as being a king underneath the prince of kings or even the king of kings, both terms used, right? He said, have I feared in the moment of war? Um, fear just means respect. I guess you're talking about, was I afraid in war? Um, yeah, there are times that I was afraid, but courage is when you, you decide as a result of your will to, to, to go through. You know, bullets are flying, things like that. You still get, you know, somebody still might need to be dragged to, to safety. Hello, MKO, how you doing? Right? So you got to make a decision. Right, but we got to protect us. If you're not willing to protect yourself, then you're not good enough for somebody else. And we're trying to protect everybody else. You got that Asian hate, stop Asian hate bill done. And they did that flawlessly, effectively, and quickly. Now, where's your bill? They got that bill to make sure, you know, you know Trump had a wink wink thing with um, protecting us. Right. And protecting what we believe in and each other. And even those that are grafted in. Look, Trump had a uh, Trump had a Trump. Trump basically had a wink, wink deal with the people who are uh, evangelicals. People were like, why are these evangelicals saying this and that? You're supposed to be Christian and blah, blah, blah. No, like there was a wink, wink deal that was done. If you guys support Trump's Trump's deal was if you guys was if then that's a contract. If you guys support me, then when I get in, I'm gonna make life easier for you. So Trump had a when he when he was headed in there, he had all the evangelicals behind him. It wasn't even you know we're thinking only racism, you know that could be a part of it, but this was a contract. He said, "Look, if you protect me, I'll protect you." So that means that if you were going to, to an evangelical place of worship, they were they weren't worried about protecting you because they already had a deal with Trump. And I'm not a Republican or a Democrat. Biden Biden is, is trash. All presidents are trash. Maybe not trash people, but let's just say they, they, they're, 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 the way they govern and the system they're attached to is trash. How about that? 
I mean, I guess it's all relative. It's, it relates to how you want to see it. If you believe that everything can move, I just I just like to keep words as what they are. But I mean, I guess we're saying the same thing. I'm trying to keep the main thing the main thing, right? And I think that's what you're trying to do as well, right? So when we're speaking on these things, like we have to comprehend. Um, it's an open form of sense. I mean, I'm trying to make sure I stay on topic. <laughs> and I have been, I think, answering every single comment that you make. You're making quite a bit. So I, I still have to make sure I stay on track with the topic. Yeah, because we have a topic that we have to get through. So I trust the moderators to be able to make sure they do what they do. Um, right. Um, and if, I mean, if you don't, I guess if you don't like the moderators making sure they do, they do what they do because a lot of people lie on people on TikTok. And therefore, since people lie on people on TikTok, and once again, this is Kofi underscore 43, we've gone up tens of thousands of, of followers or whatever twice now. Um, we're on our way to do it again. We have had lives where we've had thousands of people on concurrently at one time, uh, multiple times now, you know, on multiple platforms. And we've been taken down because people will say, oh, you're doing this, doing that. Or people get upset because we don't answer every single question that they answer or things like that. So the moderators have been trained, not by me, but just by being on here long enough that, yeah, sometimes we need to watch and protect us. You know, I don't think you're doing anything malicious, but... You know, if somebody's on here and we can't even get through something, it's like, well, is this an open forum? Meaning like, okay, I'm going to make sure even though there's 80 people on here right now, at least there was, right? And then there's several people on Facebook, there's several people on on, um, on the podcast, and somebody's like, well, you know, you, is this an open forum? You know, that's just kind of a red flag just because of what's happened before. So it's not anything against you. You know, <laughs> it's just something where it's like they're doing what we, you know, they're 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 protecting right like i would protect them they would protect me and we should protect each other it's an open platform of course you know right ne ne nevertheless when we're talking about these items we're talking about these things right um you know you you gotta you gotta you gotta comprehend when trump i think that's where i was right and that's one of the reasons why it's hard to answer every single thing because we get off track right so when we're talking about trump trump made it um, a point to um, oh, thank you for the agreement Sister Deborah. Trump made it a point to make a deal with evangelical churches and it was hey just back up whatever I said we got you so that's why Joel Osteen actually started his um, his um, serious I don't know if he's even still on anymore but his serious XM or whatever it, was, whatever it is um, radio show he didn't have one up until Trump was running as soon as Trump started running his first guest, his first show, was about Trump. And then they made sure that they said and did things to where they talked about spirituality, but they never stepped on Trump's toes. That's why you have black evangelicals showing up to the White House and telling Trump that he was the first black president, which was disrespectful to multiple platforms, because number one, Barack Obama was right before him, so that was their way of saying Barack Obama, everything he stood for wasn't for black people, which I ain't actually mad at, but it was mad disrespectful, right? And that's why we got to protect us. He was so busy saying, I'm going to throw him under the bus and make sure that I lift you up as the black president, as the white savior. Number two, though, you know, black presidents go all the way back to presidents that existed before George Washington. Right? And, and one of the things I think that we do, once again, information. Here's the deal. Information, like I said, information is valuable. Information and time are currency. Information and time are what people get paid for. This person became a pastor, not because he was stupid. And he definitely become a pastor that's big enough, known well enough to where he was brought to the White House because he was, he was stupid. He knows. And he decided to say something different. Now, that's when you are a liar. That's when you are a traitor. Right, because I'm gonna tell you, because I'm, a, I, you know, I'm gonna give the little. Uh, oh yeah, and thank you. If you want to be able to be with us, you can go to Kofi underscore forty four too. Um, I haven't been posting on there as much as I need to, so I need to get back on track with that. Uh, but eventually, if we need to be able to go from this platform to the other one, you guys can already, you know, start looking at the other platform. Um, you know, yeah, black people used to call Bill Clinton the first president, so they did that with a Democratic person too. It doesn't matter Republican, Democrat, whatever. People were doing that constantly, right? You know, but you had. You had actual black presidents. Don't forget that Abraham Lincoln's Melungeon. So he was part white, part native black, part African black. 
<laughs> right? Don't forget that Eisenhower's mama was black. I mean, get outside the presidency. This is why we talk about protecting us. People are so worried about making sure that everybody else is protected. They don't protect themselves. Um, um, Hoover, FBI, who made the FBI become what it is and controlled presidents, right? Um, Hoover was black. He was mixed, but he's black. And was locking black people up. Hoover was, you know, and I'm not even somebody who supports the lifestyle, but Hoover was was gay. It was locking gay people up. Because he was he was more concerned with protecting a nation than when he even protect his people. He was trying to pass. See, and when people try to pass to something else, you get in a dangerous territory. When people are more concerned about passing for something rather than being who they are, you get into a dangerous territory. There's been a whole bunch of damage done to your people by people who are trying to pass for something else. Yep, a drop of blood in this country, they say that's what makes you black. That's according to them, right? That one drop rule. Yeah, he was black. And people don't want to talk. So they're more concerned. So now, if you're somebody who's passing for black, and you know that white people don't like you, right? Not all white people, but let's just say in the society, we know that it's, the, it's based on white people on the top and black people on the bottom. So if you can't, right, like you're saying, be who you are, if you can't be who you are, and you decided to pass for somebody else to deny your culture and say that somebody else's culture of hurting you is all right, as long as you don't have to be associated with your own family. Now, if there's anything that might link you to them, you got to kill them all. This is one of the things people don't bring up that much about um, good old Adolf that we were talking about yesterday a lot, right? Because his people were Jewish. He was part Jewish. So when you set up a system and say that, hey, anybody that doesn't look like us is bad, but then you are them and people might find out what do you have to do? You have to start killing off your own family. He had to be the one that was most into killing off a whole group of people because if anybody could link him to what he was, was, then they would realize that he didn't pass the test. The leader of the movement was passing. That's crazy when that happens, right? When the leader of the movement is passing, when the leader of a nation is passing, when you Rachel Dolezal out this piece and you leading the NAACP, and out here passing, you're always afraid. You said explain the one drop rule. The one drop rule is very simply this. Um, the one drop rule is that when it comes to, especially the United States of America, but really, well, I, I would say mostly in the United States of America, there are other places that adopted this as well. Canada um, had something very similar to this. Other places, they just put all these different colors. You'd have some people like in Haiti, they had like 40 different colors places they would put you in legally, you know, like my, like when we talk about mahogany, ebony, um, your know, red bone, red, um, you know, all, all these different things, right? Um, they even have for white people, they had like um, uh, blanc petit and uh, blanc cajon, right? Or little whites and big whites, <laughs> you know? So they had, they had all types of stuff going on there. But in America, it basically, if they found out that you had any black blood in you, you were black. So it was the one drop rule. If they could prove anywhere that you were black in any way, shape, or form, you got to be treated like a black person. So a lot of people would pass, and they would always be afraid because if anybody could link them to being black, right? So there's a lot of people who today, there's a lot of white people who bring this up all the time, right? Um, if you just do a YouTube search or just put up people passing, right, or something like that, or black people passing or something like that, um, you'll see all these videos of white families who are telling you, that, man, I didn't know that I had black family. And they go to meet them and stuff all the time. And um, black people who didn't realize they had white family because you'll have this family member who just disappeared. Nobody knows what happened to the sister. or And they come to find out that when the sister left, uh, a lot of times, even on birth certificates, they get away sometimes in some places to where they could get a doctor to, to write that the baby was white rather than the baby was black. So you'd actually have brothers and sisters that would have birth certificates, but the brother's birth certificate would say black because he was darker, but the sister, but the sister 
they look like, you know, the baby when it's born look like, oh, this baby might be able to look like a white person when they get older. So they would just put white on there. So you literally have families that are messed up all over the place um, because these these children would then leave. And sometimes the families would be like, hey, I, we get it. Go ahead, leave, live a better life. Um, you know, right? But, it's, but then you also have white people who find out, oh, so grandma never told us who she was. We would always ask and she wouldn't tell us. And then either at the end of her life or when she basically died, they would do some research and they discover, wait a minute, you know, you come from so-and-so and so-and-so. And you go look it up and you'd be like, oh, wow. So, that you know, we actually are family together. <laughs> you know, that happens quite often. So that one drop rule, I mean, that's what that basically was. And um, how it affected a lot of things. Hey, Chill Pill, how you doing? You said exactly. Shalom, everyone. Be you and, and who cares what people think. Get your own head, folks. All right. Amen. He said, um, "I had a boss that passed. Once the secretary saw his birth certificate, it was, it was, uh, it was known throughout. That was like 35, 40 years ago. Wow. Yeah, but it happens quite often, right? Nuba says, if your great grandma or granddad was mixed at all, you're considered black. Yeah, that was the one drop rule. But you know, by the way, it's something that we do all the time. If um, you know, we don't go like, oh, you know, that's a." Uh, you know, if you take, well, I, I don't know, this isn't an exact, I won't say this is exactly a great way of presenting this. Um, however, I kind of like the mindset because it gets you to see visually, right? It helps you homiletically to get what I'm saying. Um, if you have white milk and you have chocolate milk, right? You don't say that's milk mixed with chocolate. You just say that's chocolate milk, right? If you have white milk with some strawberry syrup, right? You don't say that's white mixed with strawberry. You say that's strawberry milk, right? If you have some of the white milk that's been taken out, you don't say, you know, that's white milk, uh, that's white milk taken out, or that's that stuff was taken out. You say, oh no, that's skim milk. That's this, that's that, right? Um, you don't, right? You you don't say, um, you know, just you know, let's go on other stuff. You don't say like, oh, that's the president. That's the person second to the president. You say that's the, uh, or you don't say that's that's another president, but they just so happen to be in line for presidency. You say that's the vice president. You know, there's a very clear distinction that's made very often and very consistently, right? There's a very clear distinction, you know? I think the poisonous crayon box is more enslavement <laughs> than this conversation. Mm. You said, didn't say, say Queen Elizabeth had black lineage before? Yeah, she does. Um, you know, she's connected to King George. King George's wife, Queen Catherine, is black. He's African. Matter of fact, I forget where we went. Might have been somewhere in Baltimore. Last time we were through there, I'm not sure. But uh, we went to, yeah, it was Baltimore. There was, a, there was an art museum that we went to. And um, when you go to the art museum, um, I think on the, you go in there, and it's like, a, I forget what it's called, but basically you go up there, it's on the second floor. And when you go on the second floor, it, it's, it's surprising. It looks like a little small, almost rinky-dink type place or whatever, but then you get in there, they have some nice stuff outside. They got nice, you know, jazz band and all that stuff. They got a, a nice restaurant. Um, they got a, uh, you know, and, uh, but you go up to the second floor and on the second floor, you'll see like they have this whole place in this huge place and they have King George standing there. There's this huge painting of, um, King, no, no, no. King George is, uh, one of his sons might be his first son, his oldest son. Um, and they have a picture of him and he's mixed or he's black. Right. Um, but Queen Catherine, his mother, she's black. So right there you have you know but people will once again like they did with obama they had everybody screaming and being like oh megan merkel right megan she made it she's she's a black queen look she's gonna have a black choir come in even though megan merkel is not hung up with black people her entire life right at least since she got into and the movie stuff you know she has done her heart she's worked her hardest to make sure that she wasn't in any black movies she wasn't hanging out with any black people she wasn't being seen on the, on the on the red carpet with any black people but everybody was like yeah we got to make sure that we're gonna get behind this person because she's the first black person and all these english people were doing that stuff and it's like yo don't forget queen catherine right there you know don't forget king james yeah when you read the king james bible when i say okay i'm coming at the king james version man that king james he black and if you look at King James' parents, they're black. Just because somebody used an icono, uh, you know, iconoclastism, 
to be able to whitewash him doesn't mean that he wasn't black in the first place. And you can look up pictures of King George as he's black. You can look up the original paintings. You can look up how people drew him, um, you know, and, and what, you know, their versions of newspapers were. He wasn't drawn as a white man. He was drawn as a black man. Right, but you don't, but, and, and see, if you learn how to protect you, then you can start protecting others. Because so watch this, now that you know these things, you can protect the story instead of his story. Right, now you can have an honest conversation. You know, you can protect the story instead of his story. Hey, how you doing, Brother Dennis? Thanks for the agreement, Christine. Um, he said, Queen Charlotte as well. Charlotte, North Carolina, Harry got married on her birthday, on her born day. I didn't know that. I didn't know that. Yeah, Queen Charlotte, wife of King George III, descendant of African, yeah, Af African of Portugal, right? Like, we know this stuff. You can just look it up. You know, we say, read your Bible, it'll bless you. Well, if you learn how to use Google, right, it'll bless you too. You know, I'm not coming against you guys saying it. I'm just trying to say, like, a lot of people will tell you that Google, yo, you think you got to Google everything? I mean, you don't have to Google everything, but, hey, Google is just like using the, um, the Dewey Decimal System, you might as well use it to be able to get some information, to know where you need to go research. You said they hate modern tech, everything is at somebody's fingertips. Yeah. The bear, yeah, focus on strengthening self. For sure, right? And one of the things that we use to strengthen ourselves is to be able to see ourselves in, in the story of mankind. Right? Protect us. You learn how to protect yourself. You learn how to strengthen yourself. You learn how to be able to go. Like, you know, one of the things that allows me to be able to speak the way that I do and articulate the things that I articulate and do it without worrying about what everybody's opinion has to be all the time is what? I'm not saying I don't worry at all what somebody's opinion is, but I'm not as hyper-focused on it or hypersensitive to it. Why? I'm not, I'm not as worried about it as some people are because I comprehend the story of mankind way better than a lot of people do. <laughs> yeah, you want to dig, dig it in encyclopedia? You know, I, th I still think you should have encyclopedias, by the way, too, right? Make sure that you got something that's that's tangible, something that's written, something that you got your library where you can reach for something because internets can go down. You know, information can be all of a sudden lost. Something, you know, something can be thought to be a threat to national security or something like that. Next thing you know, you can't find something that you need to know and that your children need to know, right? M meanwhile, though, it doesn't mean that I can't just simply look up something. You know, I got Black's Law Dictionaries, all right? But it doesn't mean that I can't just Google it either. You know, there's some stuff if I wanted to get you information just off of what I have, I got to run upstairs or I'd have to, you know, try and travel to another location <laughs> that I have something. You know, so which one's fasting? But people want you to be afraid of this stuff. They talk bad about it because they don't want you to look something up on Google. He said, as long as you, it's as its original text, language has been twisted for real. Mm -hmm. And that's why we got to study etymology. And that's why we study culture. Because if you know the culture of something, you can tell when somebody changes something because you know, oh, they wouldn't have wrote that. Matter of fact, they didn't even have a word for that. That's why when people tell me all the time, like, people will come up, once again, you got to protect us, you got to protect what it is, but you got to know this stuff. Somebody will always hit you with, well, what about slavery? You guys are supporting the Bible, but the Bible supports slavery. The word slave didn't even exist when the Bible was written. <laughs> right? Right? Like, 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 you know, you got to protect us. But if you don't know that, right? So you have somebody that's trying to hold you on the ropes, get you against the rope. Oh, see, they're going to they gonna miss this. They're going to they gonna, they gonna freak out when I, when I hit them with the slavery piece. And it's like, time out, man. There was no such thing as slavery when the Bible was written. Who you think you talking to? <laughs> you know? Who you think you talking to out here? You think you're about to get me to be, um, you know, you think you're about to get me to be uh, mad or frustrated or scared of you because you, you said something about, about whatever? Like, no, man. Like, I know. I know how etymology works. I know how etymology works. And I know that there was no such thing as slavery. As far as a word, there was no word for slavery. So we're not talking about slavery. We're talking about indentured servitude. 
Right, that's what we're talking about. But you trying to get me to be on some stuff or to be afraid or to be worried. No, no, I'm not worried about any of that stuff. Like, if I know that slavery didn't exist at that, you know, at the time that you tried to bring up, then that means that they didn't have a word for slave. Now, they put slave in. Somebody else's culture put slave in because they like enslaving folk. Google is good. Books are awesome. Either way, make sure that you understand how to be able to dissect information. You know, whichever one you're using, that's the main thing, right? <laughs> you know, whichever one you're using, just please make sure that you understand how to be able to decipher information culturally. Okay, interesting. I'm trying to go live on IG. It's giving me issues. I don't know what's going on. There we go. So, but yeah, you got to be ready for that. You have to comprehend that. Right, you got to be able to protect yourself. Everybody always talking about, oh, give me this, do this, you won't listen to me, blah, blah, this and that or whatever. Where, what are we going to do? And then somebody will say, well, you know, you're talking about this, but what about these people? What about that people? What can you do for yourself? Do, can you even identify with self? How are you going to identify someone else and you can't even identify yourself? Yeah, indigenous servitude, ADA. Yeah, people who come to you with the Bible talking about, well, slavery, blah, blah, blah. It's like the word slave comes from the word Slav. We ain't know nothing about no Slav people at that time. Who were Slav people at the time of the Bible? Were they even called Slav? No. So they're talking about indigenous servitude. Indigenous servitude means there's a contract. They had just came out of Kemet, right? Don't forget, they just came out of Kemet and some of their own cousins, because Israel is part Kemetic, so some of our own cousins had just finished enslaving us for hundreds of years. Or people who didn't identify as being close cousins, if you know the history of it, right? Because it was another pharaoh. He comes out, he says, I don't recognize that family lineage. In other words, he says, I'm not, in other words, hey, you married into a certain part of Kemet, but you ain't married to our part, as far as we're concerned. So even though we kind of related, you're not, we're not as related as those others, so we ain't going to hold the contract now that our family is a dynasty, and there's too many of y'all, we're going to go ahead and enslave you, right? Or what we use the term enslave, right? Now, that wasn't indentured servitude. That was throwing somebody into servitude. We could have a better conversation about that, but they came out of that. And people of Kemet came out with them. And so you have people growing up with this mindset who grew up, who their whole lives, right, had been about servitude. And so maybe people will start saying, maybe we can enslave one another, this and that. So what do you do? You have a law. Law protect rights, right? Laws don't give rights. Laws protect rights. So you have a law that comes out that says, hey, specifically, this is how you're going to treat people as far as intentional servitude. You will have certain contracts. You will do this. They have to be able to get out of them. By the way, in our culture, you look at the year of Jubilee. You look up every, every eighth year. You look up the amount of time a contract's allowed to last. It can't last a whole lifetime. It can't put your children in servitude, right? But that's what slavery does. In Russia, they had, you can study that. In Russia, they had serfs and they had slaves, right? This was their, they, they, they had, this were their classes. You had the king, right? Then you, you had royalty, Right, the king or the queen up top, right? Then you had people underneath them that was your lords. Then underneath them you had people that were actually free. Right? Then you had people that were serfs, and then you had people that were um uh that were slaves, right? Now what happened is this. This is their culture, not our culture. See, they're trying to tell you to apply what they did to their people to what we do to our people. And that's not how that thing works. Uh, Shalom, Sister Karina, how you doing? That's not how that thing works. What they're trying to do is get you to say that and everybody on all the platforms, by the way, Facebook, IG, YouTube, TikTok, um, the podcast, Podbean, we appreciate everybody for being on. Thank you for spending some time with us. And thank you for any gifts, shares, likes, um, et cetera. If you become part of Patreon family, um, helping us with the Ausland Project 83, you're on the stuff, on the classes with us, all the stuff that you guys do, helping us be able to make sure people have food and clothes. Um, becoming so more sovereign in your life. We appreciate everybody. Thank you for being on. Um, and uh, don't forget, you know, Passover right around the corner, April 15th, right? So we're going to start on Sunday preparing for that, getting the leaven out of our home and things of that nature. So we thank you for all those things. And, and ladies, don't forget too, by the way, you got your women's meeting coming up this Saturday, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern New York time. So we'll make sure that everybody has as much information as possible um, to to get out to you guys. So, um, but yeah, so we, we're, 
you know, and, and speaking on what we're speaking on, though, you know, look at Russia. Russia, by the way, follows the same thing that all these other European nations were doing. And by the way, what is Europa? Europa is anything that belongs to Rome. So all these people that are trying to identify themselves with Rome and what they did in their society and how they mistreated slaves and how they killed people in the Senate, and right? Et tu brute, right? All these things that we know about, they're trying to imitate them and trying to put it on your culture. Well, in their culture, you had royalty, you had lords, you had free, free men, free people, you had uh, serfs, and you had slaves, okay? Now, lords, or I'm sorry, or, or monarchy, royalty, they were the people that had the most finance. Born into it, whatever, but they were royalty, right? They're at the top. After that, you have lords. Lords are people that have power. You know, they're presidents. They're governors, right? Like, like they, they have certain powers and stuff, but they're not really royalty. They don't really have the money like that. They don't have the power. They can't, whatever they speak doesn't really go. They have to, they have to listen to, the, to, the, to the, um, the person on top. Now, the person on top has to make sure that those people are appeased, but they're not worried about doing what they actually say all the time. But they have to make sure they're appeased because they make life easier for the lords. Well, the lords will make sure that life's easier for them. So the lords stay in their position. Then the lords are over the free people. Now, the free people had a tough time because the people that were free, they had to be sovereign. The people that were free oftentimes would have to live outside of the protection of the lords or, uh, or of the royalty. Because they were like, if you want to be free then you got to be able to be what? Sovereign. You got to be able to feed yourself. You got to be able to clothe yourself. So a lot of people would leave and go outside of the gate, outside of protection, but also too, it'd be tougher on them, right? Unless they were able to come into communities and stuff and find some place to where they can go away and that the royalty would leave them be, right? So that's why like when you hear some of these tales about Robin Hood or people like that and you hear that they went into the woods, Sherwood Forest and stuff like that. Well, they went into the forest because nobody was really trying to go into Sherwood Forest. People thought the forest was cursed and all these other things. So, hey, they went into the forest and just stayed in this forest. And, that, and they actually like when people would go through the forest and stuff like that, they'd rob them or do something to them to make or to sometimes do things to them where they couldn't even be seen. And nobody would be able to figure out what's going on. So they believe even more it was cursed. They protected the land to make sure that they could be free. That's where that part of the story comes from, right? So now you go from there, though, there are serfs. Serfs are people that are in indentured servitude. But here's the deal with serfs. Serfs were people that usually were once free. So serfs had a little more rights than slaves. However, in Russia, especially, if you were a serf, if you were in Russia, especially if you were a serf, right, and you signed from being a freedman to becoming a serf, what you were doing was saying, okay, I'm willing to be under the protection of this Lord, of this kingdom. I'm willing to come out from being free and come into the world, the system. However, once I do that, from that point on, anybody who's born underneath me is now a serf. I want you to get the legal ramification. This is what you're dealing with now. A lot of people are signing away freedom to be serfs. It's hard to be out here and we're not coming together and we're not living together and we're not meeting together and we're not checking on one another and we're not making sure that we're supporting each other's businesses out here. I mean, you got people doing everything in there, right? Um, you got people doing very well for themselves through their business, but none of them actually helping each other. So because of all these things, what happens? Well, you know what? It's easier to just stay in the system. And so you go in the system, but therefore every child that's born after you, guess what? They have to start in the system. So guess what? You used to be freedmen. Instead of fighting to remain freedmen, you said, well, it's easier to not fight and not make sure that we can continue to keep a contract because just because you break a contract and dishonorable doesn't mean that I can't go in a court of law and say that you're breaking this contract. So so because you decided, hey, how you doing, KFG? Um, I see you, Minister Tamara, switching over. <laughs> uh, how you doing, Brother Clem? So, so, so you break the contract, you start signing your children up, birth certificate, social security card, um, going to make sure that they get a license, going to make sure they have an ID, um, you know, while they're still in school and stuff like that. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to just break everything and put them in it. That's serfdom. So you are deciding to be an indentured servant, but what's because you're trading freedom for their protection. If you're free, you got to be able to take care of you and yours. You got to protect us. But if you're going to go ahead and be part of their system, you can't really protect us because you got to protect them. So they'll give you food and stuff, but you're going to do, you're going to do slave labor. 
you're just not quite a slave. So you get to keep a little bit of your food, this and that here and there. But then on the bottom, they had slaves. Slaves were in complete debt. Slaves were just slaves because they were born slaves. They'll never be able to get out of it. There's nothing they can do. They, they, they took away your ability to even link yourself to when you actually at some point were a freedman. Right? Those were the five classes. You had the royalty. You had the lords. You had the freedmen. You had the serfs. You had the, um, the slaves. And guess what you're still dealing with today? You got the people got all the money. Private corporations. Remember, the definition of capitalism is, is defined as, right? Google it right now, right? This is one of those things that I would encourage you to Google. Even though people would say, don't Google things, I would encourage you to Google this. The definition of capitalism is a system, right? Is it what? It is a system in which politics and economics are used to control trade and industry. That trade and industry is wielded by private corporations and not the state. The word state means country and not the country. So private corporations... Are the, are the are royalty they're on top you have the lords the people who get to be in positions of power underneath the people who have the money then you have free people sovereigns who are saying we're going to stay over here it's tough but we're going to stay over here we and we'd rather be happy as far as being able to make our own decisions and other things but then you have people that say well you know what i tried it or maybe even like i know about it but i'm not really going to do it i'm gonna keep being in this indentured servitude they're gonna keep signing myself under under the wrong thing so i can get the protection from them and then what do you have underneath that well now then you have what a slave and a slave is in debt for their whole life just because of whatever maybe it's the color of their skin maybe it's because you're a woman maybe it's because you're in a certain class mm -hmm. Maybe it's because you've been labeled as, as stupid or dumb or slow or all these things that they try to give you, but you've been put in the class, right? And you're going to stay in that class. See, so protect us. You said that's why they say it's levels to this? Yeah. So-called convenience is entrapment. Thank you, Free Bandit. Appreciate it. How you doing, Tamika? Thanks for being on. Uh, oh, hello, George in the house. How you doing? Um, that's not how we do it at our house. Yeah. Right? We protect our house. We protect us. Hey, I see you. It's time to leave with uh, three Ks in America. Thanks for, for um, sharing it with others, right? <laughs> 88 so you writing notes so what is the debt that we owe what is the debt that we owe do you do you um okay do you pay taxes do you get any benefits or privileges any benefits or privileges that you get that's why it's taxable so what benefits and privileges do you receive If you receive benefits or privileges, you're in debt. If you're in debt, you're in slave. Slave. If you're a slave, you're in debt. Are you in debt to um, a lender? You know. Hey, how you doing, Jay? Right. If you're, in, are you in debt to a lender? You know, credit used to mean that I got good. I got great credit with you. I got a thousand dollars. I already paid you. And every time I come back to the bar or the casino, wherever it is that you're going, you know, the hotel, the, the, you know, wherever you're going, right? Whenever I come back, I already paid you all a thousand. So every time I come back here, I'm straight. I don't have to worry about that, right? Every time I come back here, like, okay, hey, I owe 200 this time, fine. I got 800 credits still. Where I come back next time, I owe 150. Okay, no problem. You know, I got, what is it, 650 credits still left, right? Now credit has become how much do you pay off your debt? If you want great credit, hey, make sure that you go into debt for $200. You can get this credit card. All right, cool. You paid up 200 enough. Okay, we'll raise it up to 500. Cool, you raise it up. Go into debt 1,000 now. They keep rising it up because at some point they realize that most people, not all people, but most people will get to a place where they can't pay off the debt or they'll get an emergency situation. And what do you do instead of making sure that you, you pay off things with cash or make sure you always set things up to where you have a bill of exchange or whatever, right, to discharge debt. They know that most people will just go further in the debt. So, oh, man, I got this bill. They gave me a $20,000 credit card. Man, I got this bill that just popped up for 15000 Hey, I'll just put it on the credit card. But I never corrected my actions as a sovereign. I never corrected my business. I never 
never corrected what I'm spending money on. I never made sure I taught my money, but my my, uh, my um, people and my children and my, my my wife, my husband, what they're supposed to do with this. So now all of a sudden, I'm still going to go into debt. Okay, so I got twenty thousand. I spent fifteen thousand. I only got five thousand left, but I'm gonna just keep using this credit card, and then hopefully we'll be able to get it up. Okay, while I'm doing that, maybe while my credit's still considered to be a little high, let me go ahead and get another credit card, another credit card. Let me go ahead and get the Macy's credit card. Let me go ahead and get this credit card, that credit card. It's lack of discipline. You're not protecting yourself. You're not protecting us. You can buy a home with bad credit. You can buy a home with no credit. You don't have to pay a ridiculous loan either. Right? What happened to, we're going to save up money for our children. That's biblical, right? That's even in your Bible. We don't talk about it, but Proverbs chapter 1, verse 3 starts out by saying, we're going to talk about wisdom and truth and all that, but we got to tell you about equity. How many people are preaching on equity? When's the last time somebody preached to you about equity? What is equitable? And that you got to be honorable in order to have equity. How many people telling you about contracts? <laughs> you know? You said you had several times to sponsor your own credit card under them, they said no. Wonder why? <laughs> you know? Credit started at the town, says Plantation Principal Store. Nicene Principal. Thanks for the agreement, Mitchell. America is a debt with, within itself. Yeah, America is a slave. Who are they in debt to? That's a great point, right? You see the culture? Who, are, who is America in debt to? Who is America in debt to? You see, so if you're in a place where America's already in debt and they're trying to tell you that you need to be paying taxes to them, they're trying to pay off their their people. But watch this. They've already paid it off. I've, told, I've talked about this before, and I won't go super deep into this. We have Sovereignty 1 classes, Sovereignty 2 classes. Uh, we even have cryptocurrency. Next semester, we're, we're looking at bringing about a financial literacy course because a lot of people are asking about it. Um, and so we want to make sure that we take time to write out the curriculum correctly, but we'll make sure we go down the line of something like that. Matter of fact, I know a couple people are trying to do degrees through us right now. You've been waiting on something like that anyway, so we might as well jump started. Um, you know, some of you are working towards getting degrees with us, so uh, with SOC University, right? But you, you gotta you gotta comprehend that like these these things are there, like it. So they're in debt. America is in debt to the Federal Reserve. That's been part of the fight about capitalism versus chattel slavery. Federal Reserve needs needs capitalism to be in place, right? We talked about that. Was it last night or yesterday? Something like that. But if you understand the uh, curve needs, needs capitalism to be in place, right? We talked about that, was it last night or yesterday, something like that? But if you understand, uh, I think it was yesterday, but if you understand that America didn't have a revolutionary war, they had really had a civil war, kind of sort of had both, but, you know, the civil war was about capitalism versus chattel slavery. Capitalism needs you to um, needs everybody to be in debt. Chattel slavery just needs a few people. Remember, George Washington and them, we're like, yo, we're not trying to be in capital or capitalism or we're not trying to pay taxes. If we pay taxes, that means we're in debt. We are slave owners, right? George Washington and them were slave owners. Benjamin Franklin, slave owner, right? Thomas Jefferson, slave owner. John Monroe or James, 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 John Monroe, slave owner. James Madison, slave owner. They know. Like they, they, they knew. Like, if a slave is in debt, a debt is enslaved. We're not paying taxes. If we pay taxes, we got to become slaves. We're fighting against that. We're not going to let you come up in here and make us slaves. We don't care how much protection you give us, King George. You said China, Sister Beverly? Yeah, you know, you deal with that too. You said that's why the college, colleges now uh, are allowed credit card companies on the campuses to start you off early. Yeah, they do that with um, military members. I joined the military... 17 years old, got out of boot camp, you know, um, had just turned 18 during boot camp. And as soon as I got to, uh, wasn't even at my first duty station, I don't think. I think as soon as I was still going through um, what they call A school, um, I, had to, I had to go through A school. My A school I had to go through it for six months, um, you know, basically training you for your NEC if you've been in your MO, MOS. If you're not familiar with NEC in the Navy, it's the same thing as MOS. And um, while I was training, Got my first credit card, didn't know what to do with it, 
you know, um, it was like 200 and something dollars, spent the 200 and something. Um, all of a sudden, because I was still living in the barracks, had other expenses, was basically only getting paid, what I, I think. Well, at one point before even other things came in, I think I was only getting paid like 600 a month and then maybe it doubled to like 1200 a month. Um, you know, so I went into debt real fast. <laughs> you know, um, so guess what? From that point on, you're a slave. If you decide to continue to be synced up to the system, and you can and you can continue, and then the second I made a payment on it, I made an express contract, right? But nevertheless, the Federal Reserve are the people that tell the United States Corporation what to do. The United States of America is under a different thing, but the United States Corporation, the Federal Reserve, tells them what to do. And if you want to keep being in contract with them, then you got to understand that you're not really in debt to America. America has you as a slave, but once again, capitalism says that somebody else above you like George Washington and them fought against, right? They fought against, they, they kept slaves, but they didn't want to become slaves. Well, America keeps slaves, but they didn't want to become slaves, but Calvin Coolidge and JFK and other people eventually signed away America's rights for everything and allowed the banks to do what they do. And once they did that, now everybody who's underneath is a slave. You know, you still agree because currency is anything that you come into agreement on. So you think that cryptocurrency, a lot of people think cryptocurrency is a bad concept and you're trying to hold on to fiat cash, but you know, fiat cash, especially the dollar, the dollar is not worth anything because unless you have gold and silver to back up the dollar, it's worthless. That's the only real money is gold and silver. The dollar is a promissory note. If I give you $100, you're supposed to be able to go to the federal government and say, hey, I want um, $100 worth of gold. And they couldn't give it to you right now because they don't have it. It doesn't exist. They sold it all. They bought it from you, by the way, and then sold it to everybody else. They did that in what, the 1930s, 1940s, <laughs> you know? So, but what we're saying is you got to protect, we got to protect us. The system that you're in, they can't even protect themselves. So they're using your birth certificate as a fake person to be able to say to the federal government, because the Federal Reserve, like, think about it. I want you, I want you to think about this. We talked about this before. I'm not going to go extremely in depth in this, right? But we talked about this before already. And uh, we're going to talk about this in not this session this week for those taking sovereignty one, but we're going to talk about this probably next week. Um, if the Federal Reserve is still loaning money to America, right? People think that the United States of America is in debt. Do you think that anybody loaning money to somebody would let keep loaning it to them if they went from literally supposedly the United States government was in, in millions of dollars in debt when I was a child and now it's tens of trillions of dollars in debt today? Do you think that somebody would keep loaning money to somebody if that was the case? Right? You hear what I'm saying? Right? Do you think, do you think that anybody, no, it doesn't mean you can't work. Your labor is your work. You get your value. Matter of fact, you can go ahead and when you work somewhere, you can go ahead and um, and sign a W, well, you got to have your paperwork together first, but you can get a W-8-B-E-N because if I'm a, I'm a non-citizen national. I'm not a citizen of the United States Corporation. I'm a non-citizen national. So if I were to go and decide to work for anybody, if I decide I wanted to flip burgers or whatever, um, everybody else, you know, maybe they only making $10, $11, $12 an hour, depending on what their position is. Let's say they're making $12 an hour, which is very genu gen generous for a lot of places like that. I'd come in and I'd, be, I'd actually be making $12 an hour. The average person is going to make $6 an hour or less because you got all those taxes and things coming up. But I'm a non-citizen national. And if they try to say, no, you got to sign a W-2, but no, legally I don't. And if they try to say, well, we're not going to hire you, then I would just go above them. And it might take me a couple of weeks. It might take me a month, whatever. But once I decided, I'd be like, okay. And so guess what? If I'm making $12 an hour, actually, and everybody else only really making like $6 an hour, you think that I'm going to be, you, you, guess what? That environment is going to be a different environment for me. I mean, you're still flipping burgers. You're still standing on your feet. You're still in with all these things. and customers. But it's a lot easier to deal with a customer when you know you're making 100% of your profit versus you somebody that basically is still making minimum wage. They want you to believe in some of these places like Virginia. I don't know if Virginia's raised it or not, but I know when I worked in Virginia, I worked for a couple of restaurants before I was able to become a manager. I was making $7.25 an hour. Um, what was that, 2000? I don't even remember when. Um, years ago. Yeah, I don't remember when, you know. Um, but, but nevertheless, like, you know, decade plus ago. 
that's where I started, right? Hard time in my life trying to get out the streets, trying to stop being homeless. Was actually working two jobs for minimum wage while being homeless. <laughs> you know, so really wasn't even sleeping and wasn't making it to a bed, even though I had a bed to sleep in. Not a whole house, not a whole apartment, but I had a bed to sleep in. But a lot of times didn't even make it back because needed to make sure I was in position to get back to the next job, right? Um, and then was living in D.C., so had the expenses of D.C., but it was only making minimum wage for Virginia, right? Um, anyways, though, you know, it's making seven twenty five. Did I make seven twenty five an hour, or once you cut that in half, what was I making? A little more than three. Some really more so around three fifty because it wasn't really cut in half because your taxes are usually more than that. Then you got state taxes too, and all these other things, right? Then I got to pay taxes for DC, even though, well, I mean DC's a little different, but nevertheless, you know, like it's it, it's a wild circle, right? So you really only making three dollars and some cents an hour, but they're telling you that you making seven twenty five. That's a lie. Right. So you can go and and tell them like, no, I'm a non-citizen national. I'm not part of your thing. I don't have to sign any W two four nine ten ninety nine whatever you want me to sign. Right. I'm signing W A B N. And by the way, it's something that happens all the time because people from other countries they come over and they say, so you got people who've been living here for years and still haven't become U S citizens. So guess what? Since they never became a U S citizen, they've always been W A B N. They get 100%. So you got some people who work. Like, people make this mistake. Somebody makes six figures. Somebody makes six figures, they're not making 100000 a year. They're making 50000 45000 You're making 40000 a year. Somebody goes, oh, well, you know. Um, you know, and by the way, the average black family in America makes about 40000 I'm talking about with husband and wife, make about 40000 a year. Husband and wife working, average family making forty thousand a year. But that means really you making what? Twenty thousand? Eighteen thousand? And they're telling you to live off that. That's that's a slave. That's in debt. Being in debt is a slave. Being a slave is in debt. And so since they're but but really they're enslaved. You're you're under somebody who's enslaved. That's the game. The Federal Reserve is not giving America money. The Federal Reserve says that your birth certificate is a promissory note to them. Your birth certificate is a straw man. As long and, the, and what you're saying is what they do is they sell your straw man. They say to the Federal Reserve, if you allow us to print more money, we promise you that basically these people are going to be in debt to us and we're going to keep them as slaves and they're going to continue to pay us off and they're going to continue to work their whole lives, their, their homes that they get, everything. They're going to keep getting these contracts where they have to keep paying, absorbing an amount of money. And so once they finish doing all this, right um most of them are going to die in debt anyways right to us and everything that we get basically is going to be able to go to you right and the federal reserve says okay cool <laughs> so so america's not in debt they keep telling you oh, the national debt is getting bigger and bigger and bigger no that's that's something to keep you you know off of the real thing which is protecting yourself so you could easily go to work you could easily easily go to work and make sure that you are not enslaved. We just don't know that we're enslaved in the first place. If you don't know you're enslaved in the first place, then how would you know that you even need to do that? How would you even know? And welcome, Smith. Welcome, PY9. How are you guys doing? Thank you for being part of the community today. Right? How would you even know that you need to do that? Nobody taught you that. They didn't teach you that in school. They're not going to teach you that in school. You know, you were 30 and working on your insurance agent licenses before uh, before you knew about equity. Mm-hmm. Right? No, you know, and, and nobody teaches us this. And all the kingdom stuff that people are talking about, all this biblical stuff people are talking about, who's teaching us this? Hey, Christian Spencer, how you doing? He said you have worked and, and to live. You, you have worked and have to live two weeks until they pay you half your rate. There you go. Like even when you start, like think about this, wouldn't it be a very um, human thing to do, a very nice thing to do, to be able to say, hey, you just start for our company, we're not going to pay you for two weeks, well, you know what, no, since you're starting for our company, we're going to advance you. And if you don't make it, then you have to pay it back. Why don't you get paid in advance? Or why don't you get paid as? You know, all it is is, is, is numbers in the system. If they wanted to, they could just pay you day by day. Or you worked, you know, matter of fact, they do that if you, 
Um, if you go, if, if you work the temp agencies before, go to a temp agency. You work for a temp agency, they pay you day by day sometimes. I've literally had cash put in my hand at a temp agency, moving stuff off a truck. They'll give you a little card nowadays. They'll give you a card that you can get the money same day or same week. There are companies out there now that they, they're basically making money off of the fact that they know that people are doing you dirty. So they make money by basically knowing that, um, saying that, hey, if you put money in the pot, if you put $100 in, $200 in, okay, when your payday comes up or whatever, we'll advance you paychecks. We know what you make on average anyway, so if once, you, once we see what you make on average and you apply, right now be careful when you apply for stuff, it means you're in the system. Right, so when you apply for something, you're signing the contract. Nevertheless, though, when you apply and you go through this and you go through that, oh, no problem. We'll make sure that we do this for you. We do that for you. Nope. Nope, I don't need none of that. <laughs> you know? You said it's something you can do even after having a birth certificate. Yeah, you can just make sure that you change your status. Matter of fact, your birth certificate. See, you got to understand you're the master. And I'm not going to go deep into this, like I said, so we're going to kind of pull back and get back into protect us. But I'm just trying to give you some things that you're not aware of, right? That you can research and study. And if you want to take classes with this or if you want to look up other people, there's other people that teach this. Matter of fact, teach better than I, right? Um, you know, but we have the ability to be able to give you some of this stuff, at least on a basic, a basic level. Um, you know, nevertheless, though, like, you know, your birth certificate is, is proof of who you are, that you were born in the United States of America, not the United States. So if you want to authenticate your birth certificate, a lot of people like to go that route. I think it's easier to just, we teach more so just do the DS-11 thing. You know, DS-11 is just make sure that your passport is updated or if you don't have one, get your passport, but make sure you do it in a specific manner, right? You have to make sure you fill it out in a specific manner. And once you do, you get updated in the system. And we've had testimonies of people coming back and telling us, yeah, this happened, that happened. You know, I got pulled over and I thought I was all over and this happened. And we had testimonies of people, hey, you know, I was going to try and do this. And my job was trying to force me to do this. But you know what? Praise Yah, they didn't. And I, um, I, I went through this route, whatever. We got people in the military going through stuff and they haven't had to have different things happen to them. The people said it had to happen to them. You know, um, it, it, it comes out through making sure that you are obedient to the law. You said exactly. I got a wake up call. Six figures, not. Yeah, you think it's six figures. Now people try to get creative. Once you got six figures, they're like, okay, well we're gonna go through all this stuff and all these tax things and all. Look, if you can just make sure that your stuff is updated in the system, and you can tell people that you they're gonna kick rocks as far as trying to make you pay taxes because you're not dealing with benefits or privileges anymore, then you you're in a different space. <laughs> you know, lies, deception to keep us enslaved to system. If I just work more hours, I can get above water. Yeah. Because, by the way, why do they only have you work 40 hours? Right? I'm sorry. I might not be able to get to that free band. And um, basically, I was saying a non-citizen national, right? You don't have to be a citizen of the United States. Corporation, you can be a citizen of the United States of America. You can be a state citizen. You can be a Moor. You can be a freedman. Um, you know, you got to understand what paperwork you need, right? You know, but a lot of people don't, a lot of people don't comprehend that. Uh oh, it just made me scroll up, so I probably missed a couple of you guys. Yeah, boot camp to get that money quick. Yeah, it just forced something away. I'm sorry. <clears throat> yeah, I just skipped over something. Something happened. You know, but th these are the things that are real, and we have to protect us. We have to protect ourselves. We're in a position where we don't know how to protect us. Ms. Max said 40 hours so you don't get benefits nor pension. Yeah, that too. You know? But, but you know, but that's why they'll try to keep you under 40. But some places, they're like, go ahead and keep you 40. But they also get you 40. 40 is basically what they came up with because they, they, they studied you. They studied humanity, and they realized that for most human beings, if we work them over 40 hours, they're going to begin to lose their mind. Or their body will break down. They studied us. They studied you. Right. Whenever you hear people talking about, oh, yeah, we want to make sure that you're protected here. We want to make sure that you, we have you go through OSHA. We want to make sure that you go through this and go through that. We want to make sure you get trained. We want you to be protected at all times. They care less because they just plug somebody in. They don't even care if the person's qualified. You know, that's why they that's why they supposedly don't hire people because they're overqualified. They don't even care you qualified. That's not what they're trying to do. You said you got cash, or not cash, but a check. Yeah. 
Thanks for being part of the community. Univer is it Universal Luna? Universal Luna. There we go. I think I got it. Interesting name. You know? Like, these are things that are real. These are things that are real, and we don't know how to protect ourselves. The whole goal, once again, is protect yourself. Protect yourself. Okay, thank you, Pooh. Appreciate it, right? Protect yourself. Protect us. We're not in a position to be fighting everyone's battle. You're not in a position to fight your children's battles yet because you can't protect yourself. Scripture we bring up quite often with equity. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. Everybody always says the last thing because you're so mystical with your spirituality that you're not practical. Proverbs 13, 22. Everybody says the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. You start saying naming and claiming it. All right, that enemy over there, they've got my money. I pray that you release that money in the name of Jesus, right? You've heard stuff like that. You've read books like that. Matter of fact, there's a book that uh, this um, group that I was with was um, using all the time. I forget, it was basically a prayer book. Um, very famous one now um, that a lot of people have read. And you know what? It's not a bad read. I would actually say, you know, I, I, I could find it. I can't remember if I looked it up. Um, I forget what we used to call it. Um, if I can remember what we called it in the service, we would open up with it, and I could probably look it up and give you the guy the, the, the name of it. It'll if if it's if Ruach if she wants us to have it, she'll bring it to my remembrance. Um, however, you know, um, a lot of people pray. I name and claim it, but Proverbs thirteen twenty two doesn't just say that the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. It starts off with what. It starts off with you got to have a mindset to take care of your children's children, and when you have that mindset, now the wicked who have a mindset to take care of their children and children, they have to let go of some of that to allow you to have what was rightfully yours. Protect us. You're so busy talking about, I'm going to take from the wicked, that you ain't thinking about that my mindset isn't protecting my family. Some of y'all been praying for millions of dollars. If y'all was to give some of us millions of dollars, we wouldn't be able to do much of anything. You said prayers that avail much? I don't remember what I was talking about. I don't know what the, you had a question mark on it. Prayers that avail much. Well, through prayer, I guess we can get things too. Yeah, I was not, I don't know if that's what was going on there contextually. I'm sorry. I'm missing it. If you can maybe say it again, Sister Tracy, maybe give me a little more um, in, uh, insight, is it? Right, but you got a lot of people. Oh, the book. Oh, the name of the book. No. It, 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 it'll come to me. We used to use it all the time. I probably have a screenshot of it somewhere in my phone, but if I use this phone while we're on, then, you know, I'll lose the signal. So I can't look at it right now. Matter of fact, I probably could text somebody and ask them, you know, the name of it. They probably send it to me. Um, actually, I have a copy of it probably somewhere floating around. Not at this location, probably somewhere else in storage. You know? Yeah, a great man leaves, or an Elohim-like man, a good man, whatever, he, he leaves an inheritance to his children. And we don't even have information that we leave for our children. Isn't it amazing that we are all children here? We all have parents, and yet a lot of us are like, we never heard this stuff. And it's because, what, our parents never heard this stuff, they were children too, and it's because their parents never heard this stuff, they were children too. And some of our parents knew this stuff, but then told us, well, it doesn't matter. It's not about this. It's not about race. It's not about being black. It's not about, and it's like, it's not just about that. What about the other stuff that comes with it that you didn't teach me? We have some parents that invest, and their children don't know about investing. And then people say, how did your parents make all this money, and you didn't make any money? It's like, they didn't teach me anything. Just because you're giving your children fish doesn't mean that they know how to fish, right? Come on now. Just because you're giving your children fish doesn't mean they know how to fish. My son eats and eats well every day. It doesn't mean he knows knows how to cook every day. He got to learn, <laughs> right? Yeah, we got to protect our children's children. And generation has been brainwashed after generation. And by the way, we got to brainwash. Can, can I say it like that? Some people don't like it when you say that, but we got to brainwash. We got to wash all this filth out of our children's minds. 
You know, I have to, I have to literally, because I know my son, my son is like me. When he gets focused, locked in on something, he'll be on it all day if you let him, right? He's okay with being by himself, too, even though he likes to play with the children. He's okay with being by himself like his dad. So if we go somewhere, hey, we ain't bringing no devices with us, right? You need to focus. You need to be able to look out a window. <laughs> you need to be able to see some trees. You need to be able to know water exists. You know, you pass, you're going on all these trips. And fine, some of the time you can be on a device, but you're going to be on a device so much to where when I'm saying like, hey, look, we're, we're going over this long bridge. We're we're in this area. We're in Cherokee area. We're in Choctaw area. We're in Mississippian area. We're looking at Massachusetts stuff. We're looking at people of Lancaster. We're looking at um, the second city. We're looking at, like, do you know why this is the second city? You can see something. Why is the second city here? All this stuff. Like, no. Like, he's sitting, like, you ain't going to be up on your device so much that you're going to miss life. I'm going to brainwash you because they, they, they're trying to make you dirty. Right? I'm going to brainwash you. I'm going to wash you clean of those things. We got to make your mind clean. The word clean in Hebrew translates to, the, to, to being legal. And people are out here dirty. Dirty minds, illegal. Doing dirty deeds, illegal. There's even a wrestler out right now. I don't even know what his name was. I think he was known at the WWE before as... Um, I don't even remember his name there, <laughs> all right? Uh, but, you know, he basically, like, in something called AEW now, or whatever, his, he doesn't move, but it used to be called, like, Dirty Deeds when he was in WWE. So, like, he's going to go ahead and hit you with his finishing move. It's called Dirty Deeds. Why Why is it that children who are watching this stuff even can't watch a wrestling move but now somebody saying it's dirty? And, of course, they're going to be showing all their body and everything like that as well. So you see these children walking, watching grown men grabbing up on each other all the time, oiled up, making sure their hair is wet, you know, the sexual appetite type stuff that people are talking about, doing gladiatorial stuff, doing things that are romantic. Um, a whole bunch of people, my generation, if you watch wrestling growing up, um, especially WWE stuff and even WCW, if you know about that stuff, whatever, um, we grew up literally seeing women fighting women in mud wrestling because they knew the teenage boys were trying to look for anything they could right to be able to look at a, at, at a nipple <laughs> real talk right and they knew that so in knowing that they put out as much stuff as they could and parents who weren't necessarily around or had to work or were just tired or were like well whatever it's not a big deal i mean we were doing all that we were doing fake we were doing wrestling moves and things to each other outside you know on mattresses and stuff there are children that have killed other children accidentally but have killed other children Matter of fact, there's a black boy who killed a, a white boy by accident. They gave him life. You know, he'll never be out again. You know? These these are things that we, we we're, cause, and we don't comprehend it. You got to protect us. You know, my uh, my mom, well, you know, my mother-in-law, my mom has passed away for 20 plus years. Now, my mother-in-law who, who, you know, blesses me and watches over me as if she is my own mom. Um, she always says, like, guard your gates. Be careful what you let in. Do you protect what's coming into your mind? Do you can um, protect what's coming to your children's mind? Right? Because if we're not careful, it will be a cycle that never ends. But in this system, it's systemic. That's why we talk about systems. That's why we talk about culture. This culture of the United States corporation, this culture that is romanticized, this culture that is leading you to Babylon the Great, this culture that's of the government, the beast, this culture that came out the water, the people, this culture that came out of at Satan, which is the devil, right? This culture that came out of that serpent, all these things culturally that are going on are what? They are designed to keep you in a loop. If you're in a loop of confusion, you don't know the path to walk. That's why most people will search for the wide gate, not realizing that the wider the gate, the easier it is to get lost. That's why there's a straight and narrow gate and only a few will find. Only a few people are looking for something that's going to keep them disciplined and honorable and learned and read and keep us away from that crab in the barrel mentality. You know? So it's also said that's very unfortunate. My father was an investor and businessman, but didn't show us anything. Yeah, a lot of people don't. A lot of people are like, hey, just, you know, as long as my children are having fun and growing up and doing this or whatever, right? But, you know, you were so worried about them having fun and this and that, right? I, I, and I'm not saying that your child shouldn't have any fun. I would have loved to have known how to invest like my father knew how to invest so that when I got older, I could have fun. You know, I'll trade in the some of the fun as a child to be able to make sure I can have some more fun as an adult. 
See, my son is homeschooled. He gets to travel the world. He gets to do all types of stuff. He doesn't have to worry about a lot of things that the children do. He gets to start a YouTube channel. He gets to do all these things. But guess what? Like, he still has to stop some of that stuff, and he's got to get some discipline in him. We have to protect. We must protect this house, like I said earlier, right? Have to. You have to. Trevor said, yep, our generation would have been focused on these various rated X sites. Yeah. I told you, like, my my lust issues as far as, um, you know, it's something that's generational curse, of course. Um, you know, but as far as lust issues and pornography and things like that, I found that in um, in the closet, in an apartment. My father's stash that he hadn't got rid of. Stuff that was in a box. And the box said XXX on it. Right? Which meant that, like, it, it wasn't even hidden. That's where it started, right? Generational curse. But it started before him and before him. Amen, Marion. We're grateful, right? Yeah, we got to brainwash them. He said, the cycle of protection ends with me. I'm a curse breaker, protection of generations. Amen. Amen. You know? Yeah, got to keep your children off. Or even with the, on the devices. Look, if he's on a device, guess what I do? Every once in a while, let me see that. I'm going to look at the stuff that's popping up because you know they just start feeding them stuff. Um, like especially if they're at the age where they read that well. You know, like he's coming to an age where he can read and I'm trying to get them to make sure that he's typing stuff in that he wants to watch. You know, so you can control what's coming through, but you have to know how to do it. But they're going to just start flooding stuff in. So if he's into Roblox, for example, um, it doesn't matter if the people on Roblox are disgusting people or not if they're people that are trying to do stuff that you know grooms children right or whatever like these people are on there they're doing all types of wild stuff so i gotta go on there and i'd be like wait a minute like why does this have a sensor over even though it's roblox character so it wouldn't really be naked but why is this roblox character running around naked uh blocking that channel or not interested in this video don't send anything from this channel don't recommend this chant. Like, I'm going down the list of stuff. And so by the time, and then I, what, you refresh it so that he can't see it again. But eventually, if you're not careful, that stuff just pops up again because guess what? There's a spirit. People will keep, people see that somebody else got a million views on that disgusting stuff. So somebody else will put that same thing up just because they want to see if they can get a million views as well. Right? And so you have all these people doing a lot of different things all over the place. <laughs> you said, go, go and have you reading when you travel now? <laughs> Yeah, don't miss out on life, I mean, right? And a lot of us miss out on life. How many of you could have been traveling more had you been able to have an inheritance? Because we think inheritance is, once again, see the, the trick of the enemy, you got to protect yourself. Protect yourself. Protect your children. Protect yourself. Those who are younger right now, and I'm not that much older than me, I'm still young, right? And I, I consider you to be in your, your 70s or 80s young. Young is your lifestyle, right? Um, nevertheless, I'm 39 years old this year going on 40, right? And 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 so I'm not that far removed from 25, from 35, whatever. I would say this, though, is that if you're 25, right, stop talking about what you need to do to have fun all the time. Invest in having fun when you're older. Invest in having freedom. Matter of fact, invest in having fun now, but make sure that you get the funds, right, the F-U-N-D-S, to have fun, F-U-N, right? You don't need the extra beer, right? You don't need to always eat out. You don't need to have processed food. You don't need to eat three meals a day, right? These are things that nobody has really shown us. And these are things that are also taken out of your pocket, right? And you're investing, by the way, in stuff anyways. You're, you're, you're tithing the stuff anyways. A tithe is a tribute. You're giving tributes all the time. You, you're buying your favorite team's sports paraphernalia. You know, you ain't giving to the king of kings, but you're giving to Budweiser, the king of beers, you know what I'm saying? Like, like if you can reverse some of this stuff, you begin to, to start getting things that people keep saying, oh, I'm not going to do that. That's that's crazy. I don't need to worry about this. I don't need to worry about that. And you get to be older and you're like, oh, I should have worried about that the whole time. Well, it's too late now. Do the reverse is what many people have done, which is they start off giving everything away, not counting the cost. And they're trying to figure out later, mm, maybe I should have done that. Right? If you got to have a job, job out now so you can relax later, later, right? Put that work in now. 
right? And be in your work. You should always be in your work. You can't retire from your work. I will never be able to retire from what I'm doing now. I don't care if my mouth gets shut. In some way, shape, or form, I will never be able to retire from what I do now. Period. If I can only preach to myself, I will be preaching. If I can only teach to myself, I will be teaching until the day I die. It, it doesn't go anywhere, right? But now that I've decided to put in the work, what's, what's going to happen is when I put in the work now, it's going to guarantee that a lot of that stuff that other people go through when I get old is not going to be the same. So other people who are putting themselves in situations where they're not healthy and things of that nature, it's not going to be the same for me. Right. I comprehend that I need freedom, not just even financially. That's why when we talk about sovereignty, we teach sovereignty. We don't just teach sovereignty as far as only paperwork, only making sure you don't have to pay taxes. Sovereignty is having your own land, not your own property, but your own land. If you know the difference. Right. Pro sovereignty is not just about being able to make sure that you don't have to pay taxes. You know, sovereignty is about making sure that I am wealthy, not that you're rich, but that you're wealthy. I don't have to go to the doctor. I'm not saying you'll never get sick, but I'm saying I shouldn't have to go to the doctor. People talk about, well, go to the doctor for an annual checkup. You can check up yourself. You can look at what your own tongue looks like. You can tell if something's swollen on you. If you have a gland, if you're eating certain things or whatever, your glands are absorbing certain things. They're poisonous, right? If you're absorbing things in your glands, that's why your glands start acting up. You make sure that you deal with your glands. You wash those glands clean. You eat things that help with your glands, but then also just start eating things that are natural, that are healthy. And then your glands that absorb things out of what you eat, they won't, they won't have a problem anymore. But you'll go somewhere else and they'll tell you, oh, your thyroid's out. We're going to cut a piece of it out. What? Now I got to be on unnatural medicine for the rest of my life, which is going to give me other side effects. And hopefully I can afford those things. Now you're in debt. You're a slave. You're a slave to the thing that's supposed to be healing you. Why? Why? Because somebody told you it's acceptable, really. He said you can sit next to someone. Uh, the phone will send you sites and things like that. Yeah. You said your son's YouTube is under your account. Yeah, you know. So ours is under uh, my wife's account as well, you know. But these are the things, you know, that we have to recognize and realize and 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 think about, you know, more and more. You said you take medicine for mental health and depression. Um, I used to do the same. You know, the way that you think actually causes more stuff. You know, getting in the sun helps you a lot with those things. Being in the sun and being barefoot. Now, I know it's cold, you know, so it might be a little difficult depending on where you live. But being in the sun and being barefoot in the grass, putting your hands in the air at the same time, you'll begin to smile after two minutes minimum. I mean, maximum. You know, you might start to smile after 20 seconds. Some of you started smiling when I just said it. In your mind, you might have thought it was crazy. I'm telling you, like, go outside, put your feet in the ground, lift your hands in the air, look, get in the sun, and you can't help it, Right? Um, eat eat certain foods like you know also too understand like the way that you think so the way uh, uh, as a man thinketh so is he as a woman thinketh so is she. How you doing, uh, Dwayne? Thanks for being on with us, right? Like these are things that are there for you. How you doing, SK New? And you got to learn how to protect us, protect yourself. to speak true most younger generations have never been hungry yeah and by the way you know a lot of stuff comes out of your hunger you know a lot of stuff comes out of your hunger including when you fast i'm not just talking about be hungry go want it be a go-getter i'm talking about sometimes be just being fasting is something that blesses you fast from some things there's some things you're hungry for you need to fast from there's some people you're hungry for, some some people that you want their opinion, you know, to make sure that they make you okay. You're waiting for them to feed you and to pat you on the back and to say everything's going to be all right and to say that, you know, you, that stuff that, that they're speaking over there, you don't have to worry about it. And by the way, those who are on the podcast, I think we got about four or five minutes before it's going to shut us down because we can only go about two hours before it allows us to be, you know, it tells us that we have to be off the live. So thank you for being on. We appreciate it. And we look forward to uh, um, if you're going to come over on another uh, platform with us. We look forward to having you join us on another platform. Thank you so much. We're on, you know, look up hashtag find Kofi, hashtag F-I-N-D-K-O-F-I. -F you can find us on IG, YouTube. Uh, well, YouTube not live right now, but 
IG, TikTok, Facebook Live right now. If you want to watch the rest later on on YouTube, um, we invite you to do so. You know, but we have to learn how to what to, to protect ourselves. That means you got to teach yourself or you have to be taught by somebody who has your best interest at heart. That's why you have to know the culture because the culture will begin to tell you if somebody's staying within culture. If they're staying within culture, then they've got your best interest at heart. If you share the same culture, then it means you share the same interest, which means that when they're telling you something, they're telling it from your culture. Oh, I almost dropped the phone <laughs> from your perspective. Said things I'm learning later in life. I'm trying to teach children young in life, but they know everything. Um, they might. They might feel like that, right? So that's why you just plant seeds. Seeds either grow or not. And there's so many people that call me up later in life being like, man, you know what, you're right. Maybe you should, I should have listened to you. Maybe this, that, or whatever. One of the things we're going to put on Patreon um, that I have recorded but hasn't been uploaded yet, sorry. Uh, you know, but it was a rough day yesterday for me. It was rough, not, but I, or tough. It was tough, but I said tough is not an excuse. And one of the things that made it tough was that somebody who I told things about too many times and doesn't even hasn't I don't think I've heard from them probably like a year outside of when I've checked on them from time to time all of a sudden calling me you know I need blah blah this and that or whatever amongst other things that were going on in my life at the time right um you know but people will oh yeah you know I should listen to you or, oh can you still pray for me can you still do this or can you tell me this situation it's like man should we talked about this 25 years ago <laughs> you know like sometimes that's li I'm not even talking about like somewhat like you know there's there's people like we talked about this 25 years ago we still you still on that you still on that you know but we don't protect ourselves you said they will eventually uh, uh, 39 just finding truth amen it's fast people places things yep hello mountain man how you doing you said be around laughing. You will eventually, eventually, um, won't smile or laugh, or smile or laugh. Just the thought of sunshine makes you smile. Yeah, you smile too. Mm hmm. Yeah, illness can't make you feel trapped, you know. Um, and, and the goal is to get you to be trapped. That's what that whole industry is about. That whole industry is about making you feel trapped. Once we get you trapped, once you once you cross a certain line, your body physically ain't gonna be able to do but so much. It doesn't mean we can't still prolong life and stuff, but that's the goal is to get you to where, hey, well, they keep coming back. And we don't protect us. That's why we talk about natural medicine. That's why I make sure that Bloom and Flourish uh, products and things like that are always talked about. My wife, I'm not just trying to be like, hey, get in my wife's business, you know, make her rich or something like that. That's 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 far from it. She has um, she has made it her business to make sure that people are not trapped in healthcare. That's really not healthcare. You know, so that's why if somebody says, oh man, I'm having problems with focusing or whatever. You know, I don't have to say, well, you know what, take Ritalin. I've been there and done that as a child. I was when they were doing some of the. Um, experimental stuff they had they were doing that stuff on me right and i was sitting there like a zombie where my mom saw me was freaked out and took me off right and i couldn't even talk to her i had no emotion and stuff like that so i've, I've been on stuff as a child i've been on stuff like concerta if you know about concerta concerta basically is meth methylenidate that's what concerta is when i was in the military taking concerta because they said that i had adhd as an adult, when I was in the military, they were saying I had to take concerta. I had to, whenever they took it, uh, we did a year analysis, I had to tell them I was going to pop positive. And think about that. Now, I'm serving the country. Gun in my hand. Meth. What's acceptable about that? That's the culture that they provide, though. That's the culture that they provide. Amen. We plant seeds. Amen, right? But that's the culture they provide. You said you have a desire to do more with herbal education and applying it to your massage therapy practice. Amen. That's a great thing to be able to use. You know, massage therapy practice, what, what herbs you're breathing in. That's why we're not against smudging, by the way. You know, smudging is just incense. <laughs> you know, um, you know, uh, there's natural incense you can use. Wrapping somebody's stuff up, you know, instead of wrapping up somebody's stuff in these bandages they give you, um, which may help or whatever for a little bit, why not wrap somebody's up, up in a bandage that has... Um, you know, lettuce inside or cabbage inside. Something natural in your nature. 
to go pills is used in the Air Force. Uh, yeah, you know, um, but you got people, you got people drugged out, trapped, trapped in drug life. And they themselves would tell their children to be drug free. You see the chaos of the system, the cognitive distance within the system. They would tell their, they would teach their children be drug free, and they would think their parents would be drug free, not realizing that that medicine that medicine cabinet. Oof! Open that thing up. Drug city in there, right? Drug city up in that cabinet. Drug City up in that cabinet. You know? Drug City all up in that cabinet. <laughs> you know? But they're telling you, hey, be drug free. You, where, where do you think this stuff is coming from? Generational curses. They're not even trying to lie to you. They can't help it, though. They're living a lie. Somebody told them something different. And they're trying their best to live something different. And at the same time, live something real. They're trying to live false and real at the same time. How, how, how do you do that? How do you become successful when you have to live in cognitive dissonance all day, every day? How do you do that? You got to protect us. You're not any good to anybody if you can't protect yourself. Right, if you need a month for Black History, you're already behind the eight ball. You need to know your history every day. You know why? Because you weren't taught your history every day for years of your life. If you weren't taught your history for forty years, and you're forty-two, and you've been on this woke thing for two years, you behind the eight ball. Don't worry about a month. Every day be in your in your history. Every day be in your culture. Every day be in a new language. Even if you can't speak it, there are languages that I've been born. I'm um, in the West Africa, right? I would have been able to speak multiple languages and stuff like that of our people. I wasn't born there, but I still have a responsibility to make sure that I get as much as possible. I'm going to protect us. A lot of people, when they, they come on, they say, oh, man, you know, you're teaching things or saying things we've never heard, this and that or whatever. And you know why? Because I'm simply protecting us. I'm just giving you culture. I'm not running game. I'm not saying that if you don't pay me enough, I'm not going to give it to you, blah, blah. I'm just simply giving you culture, and we do it every day. The reason why we do it every day is because people have not been taught this. People were not raised in environments where this is so. People were taught the exact opposite, and even if you knew it to be so, if you're like me, you still had a little, if we be honest, you had a little bit of being afraid. You know, I, I could have started doing this years earlier than what I did, but, you know, I was taught that, hey, well, people are going to look bad at you, and people aren't going to say amen to you, and people aren't going to show up, and maybe, they're, you know, maybe you won't be able to do this on your own because, you know, you need people to help with finances and stuff. Well, if there aren't people giving tithes or offerings and different that, like, you know, we, we, we could have moved earlier than what we did. You know, let's 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 keep it a hundred with ourselves. Protect ourselves from even lying to ourselves. You know, we could have done a lot better sooner. Yeah, you can't have two masters, right? You'll either love one or hate the other. And by the way, what is a master? Remember now, when we say you're the master, what is a master? When you're talking to these public servants out here, because they're just servants, you're the master. What is a master? A master is a teacher. Revelation chapter three, verse nine. Israel, be ready to teach. There are those that say that they're you and are not, they're being exposed. But guess what? Once they're exposed, if we just go, see, you're wrong, what does that do if you can't teach somebody what's correct? Mm -hmm. yeah. I can't tell you how many times I have people to go back and forth, and you hear people go back and forth, and you have to do these life coaching sessions and marital coaching, and people just go back and forth. Well, if you didn't do, well, if you didn't do, well, if you didn't, at some point, man, somebody be the mature, the perfect perfected person, the, the kingdom-minded person, the person with kingdom psychology in the room to be able to say, I'm going to be the curse breaker. We're going to stop this. Hey, look, I was wrong. Or, hey, look, the word says this. Can both of you get to a place to where the word says this? Can both of you get to a place to where none of, neither one of us is 100% right? Or if there's a case where somebody's 100% right, both of you can agree to it, and that's it. It's always amazing to me that people will agree on what the problem is, and then will argue about the problem still. It's like, if the problem has already been agreed upon, at this point, let's stop arguing about the problem. Let's start trying to figure out how we can fix the problem. 
<laughs> right? You're the master. Somebody got to be the master. Somebody got to be the teacher. Somebody's got to have their masters in in um, in in um, in the Torah or the Torah. Somebody's got to have their masters at some point. Somebody got to teach it. <laughs> you know, who's gonna get their masters in this? Who's gonna teach the community correctly? Who's gonna protect us? Who's gonna make sure that our our our, our sisters out here feel like they're protected? Who's going to make sure that these brothers feel protected? You know what's always crazy to me? When brothers come out and speak well about sisters, there's always there's always a sister out there and a brother to be able to say that brother is just trying to get views. And if a brother and if a, and if a sister comes out and says something to protect the brothers, there's going to be sisters and brothers out there that's always going to try to say that they're just trying to get views and that they're wrong. Or if somebody says, man, you know, these sisters could be better in one area. Somebody says, "Well, we don't, we don't, we we can't be better until the brothers are better." And if somebody says, "Well, the brother can be better in this area," then the brother gonna come up. Well, we can't be better until the sisters get better. At some point, will somebody man or woman up and just be mature? At some point. At some point, will somebody just say, "All right, so one of us need to be better. Let's just be better." I need to be better. Like that's all we need to do. At some point, like will somebody step up and do that? Self accountability, right? Protect yourself. Protect yourself by being accountable. You know how you protect your money? You protect your money by being able to have an account for where it went. All right, Moto, you be blessed, right? Somebody got to account for this stuff somewhere. Amen, Sister Beverly. Right? Somebody got to account for this stuff somewhere. You can't even. You know how many people spend money and then. Come to somebody and say, hey, can you help me with something? And none of them ever say, like, here's the, here's the part that's always interesting to me. Nobody ever comes back and says, though, um, can you help me to make sure that I'm better accountable for my money? They want you to fix the problem, but they don't want to fix the spending. Well, we can't really, if we fix the problem, but the spending is still bad, guess what's going to happen? Then you're going to run into the same problem. Amen. Repentance is protection for yourself as well. So if you're spending money out here, if you're spending whatever it is you're spending, you could be spending words, you could be spending um, time that should be used for prayer, you could be spending time that should be used for sovereignty, whatever. But if you're spending money out here and you're spending it wrong, then if we fix the problem and you're still spending money the same way, it's going to be the same issue. At some, time, at some point, we got to go to the original source. The original source is what? It's the principality, the principle of the thing. When somebody says it's the principle or it's principalities, we're talking about origin. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. It's origin. Where did this thing originate from? Where did this mindset originate from? Where did this thing originate from? Like, are, are, is your argument coming from? Like, watch this. Sisters, love you, right? You know, I love you, right? But just keep it in the hundred. You know, and if you need to talk trash with me about about this in the women's meeting, so be it. I know y'all want I'm just playing. <laughs> you know, but sisters, I love you, but real talk. You know how many sisters that I hear talk about stuff about their husband and really it's issues that they have with their father or lack thereof? And so the husband is trying to hang in there and listen. And it's getting argued down on and stuff. And I'm sitting there watching it as they're in front of me. And I'm like, that's not that has nothing to do with him. Or you had a man before that did blah, blah, whatever. And so if he does something that reminds you of it. And brothers do the same thing, right? Right? Brothers do the same thing. Your your wife is doing something. And all of a sudden, next thing, you, it reminds you of some relationship you had a long time ago. And I've done this before, right? And you start going off on her. And they ain't got nothing to do with her. It's the shadow. Right, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. It's not death; it's just a shadow. Right? You see, you see my clothes right here. You see this right here. This is a shadow. This is my hand. Right? If I were to punch with my shadow, it doesn't hurt, but because it reminds me of something that might have once hurt me, because it reminds me of that, it is what? It's it's the shadow. I'm concerned about the shadow. The shadow doesn't hurt, but it reminds me of something. So we won't protect each other because we think that the shadow, something that reminds us of something else, if it looks like something else, then it must be something that's going to hurt us. So we think the other person's not protecting us. I mean, this thing goes in so many different directions. You know, you can see the point. Glad it's not your experience. Mm. 
Amen. Said insanity repeatedly. Keep doing the same thing. Expect a different outcome. Mm-hmm. Mercy said, or Mercia says, you're so informative. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it, right? And thank you all for your time. You know, at this point, it, um, Holy Spirit saying it's, it's just about time for us to take our leave. So I really don't have too much to add, you know, just as a reminder, you know, make sure that you're aware um, that you need to protect us. Protect us. If you're not in a position where you can protect yourself, you're not in a protect. Watch this. If you can't protect yourself, then brothers, you're not ready for a marriage. If you can't protect your husband, sisters, you're not ready for marriage. You're not. You're not qualified yet. Hey, Shalom. How you doing, Nicole? Right. If you're not. If you're not in a position to ready to do that for somebody else, you're not qualified yet. What do we mean by that? Right. What do we mean when we say you're not qualified yet? If you're not in a position to protect somebody else, you're not qualified yet. Sisters, if you're not in a position to where your husband can say something to you and it won't come up again in an argument with him or you won't talk, tell somebody else about what's going on, you're not qualified yet. Protection is key. Protect us. Brothers, if you're in a situation to where your wife's not going to feel secure and you don't feel like you'll help her to feel secure even when she makes you upset, you're not qualified yet. Protect us. If you're talking about having a child with somebody, but you're not even talking about being married to somebody, and if you knew what sex was and marriage was, right, that wouldn't even equate, but nevertheless, right, then you're not qualified. You're not. If you're talking about having a child, but you don't want to be married, you're not qualified to open your legs. Or to get in between somebody's. Salah. I know somebody think that's a mean way to say it, but it's real. <laughs> You're not. I'm not saying that you won't that, that that child still can't be blessed if there's a situation that can't that happen. I'm not saying that we won't be there for you and your child if you need help from somebody. I'm just telling you, like, if you're going to do that, you're not qualified yet. You know, that's why people get into stuff. And I've had issues with this in my life. So I'm talking about me right here. Like, that's why people get into stuff like porn and things like that. You want to know something, but you don't want to be all the way into it. You're not qualified. You want to you want to partake. That's why people want to have sex and not get married. You, you want to use a condom. By the way, condoms aren't even healthy. <laughs> right? Condoms actually hurt you. They're not healthy. <laughs> right. That's a whole other discussion. But, you know, but that's why people want to have sex with condoms. You know, I want to go ahead and do everything that I'm supposed to do, but I don't want to be, I want to be, and forgive this is a bad pun. I don't even mean to, this is not an intended pun, but forgive the pun. Nevertheless, you want to have sex with somebody. You want to penetrate somebody. You want to be in something, but you don't want to be all the way in. You want to be in something. You want to have sex with the person. You want to, Make the person feel good. You want to make yourself feel good, but don't give me the responsibility that comes with it. My wife has had experiences talking to sisters where the sisters are talking about, I'm just here to have a great time. And my wife is like, well, if you here just to have a great time with somebody, like, she's like, I know a bunch of men I've talked to before. And once you say words like that, they don't look at you the same. So, so you better make sure your intentions are known or you better make sure you're ready for that lifestyle. Because if you're going to be in a lifestyle where somebody can just use you sexually, then that's it. But don't get upset with them when they do. Thank you for the, uh, uh, thank you for, what, what was that? The hanging lights. Thank you, Slander, right? You know, people people want to get in this stuff and they ain't ready for it. Yeah, shared energy is real. Yeah, people want to get in these relationships and they ain't ready for it. Don't get in it if you ain't ready for it. Don't get in, in any depth whatsoever into a relationship if you're not qualified. Because you're not going to be able to protect the other person. And I know we always end up going back to marriage, but marriage is the cornerstone. People want to have sex. I, I know. I know. Brothers have told me straight up. Yeah, I want to go. Uh, you know, they got mad at the women that they were with and left them because the women were asking them. They didn't have to work. They didn't have to provide. They didn't do nothing. The women just was like, "Yo, if you're gonna be here, if we're gonna be together, could you at least watch my children and stuff?" And they were like, "Oh, that's too much," and left out. 
and don't even see the lack of humanity in it. I know sisters who got in a relationship with guys and are legit having want to be the side piece. I'm not talking about found out they were. I'm talking about wanted to be the side piece. And said it was because, hey, I can have all the benefits of knowing of having a married man knowing how he's supposed to treat somebody, but I don't have to really be accountable. And when the man, and if the man decides to do something that you would think would be a natural progression, it's not really natural anyways, but you know what I'm saying, would be a progression out of that, right? Where they would come and they say, okay, well, I'm spending time with this woman doing this and she doing all these things that my wife doing, blah, blah, blah. Okay, he leaves the wife to be with her and then she'll be like, I don't want nothing to do with you. And he's blown and thrown for a loop because he tried to leave 80 for 20 or 90 for 10. <laughs> you know, some people leave a 99 for one. There ain't no such thing as somebody who has no faults. Don't get into marriage. If you think if you think if you can't protect your marriage if, or if you can only protect something that has to protect you. Remember, that's Luke chapter six. Read Luke chapter six before you get to verse 37 and 38, which is where we get. If you judge people, you'll be judged that way. If you condemn people, you'll be condemned that way. If you can't forgive, you won't be forgiven. Therefore, give and it will be given unto thee. Great measure. Elohim's measure. Press down, shake it together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom for with the same measure that you meet shall it be given unto thee. If you're somebody who's gets that but doesn't understand what comes before that. Because Yashrai also was speaking there. He says, man, stop saying that you all that because, you know, you take care of other, or, you know, you take care of other people. Or you take care of people to take care of you. He was like, people in the world that you say are evil, they do that. He said the Gentiles, the hypocrites, the, the, the publicans, the people you can't stand, they have enough sense to take care of people to take care of them. Right? Don't protect your people just because everything's a hundred. You keep it 100 with me, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. Keep it 100 at all times. <laughs> right? Well, you know, um, I'm I'm, I'm going to be, you know, he, he ain't really doing what he's supposed to do, so I ain't going to do what I'm supposed to do. Well, then if he sees that and sees you ain't doing it, both of y'all just keep being there. Why are you going to be involved in a relationship? Some of y'all for 20, 30 years, and y'all ain't really invested the whole way. They, that, you're wasting time. And once again, time is value. Time is money. Time is resource. Time and information is what every what, what gets everybody paid. Time and information is what's going to allow the most high to come back. Remember, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14, when we preach this specific message, that's when he says he's coming back. So you got to make sure you have the right information. But we are in relationships with people. We are in relationships with businesses. We are in relationships with... Um, with um, with with our children, we're in relationships with these school systems. We're in relationships with uh, with the United States of America, whatever the case might be. We're in relationships with ourselves that are based off of you know. I'm not going to treat you know. If my body starts doing this, well, whatever. I'll just eat whatever I want. I try to eat healthy, and my body didn't start doing. No, like did you did you eat a hundred percent healthy? Right, your body's betraying you because your body has been betrayed so many times that it just has to live in betrayal. Now it's trying to get itself healthy, and you won't even do what you're supposed to do for it. On a regular basis, consistently. Uh, Christine said, men or women, who does that never thought to be a husband or wife? Yeah. Didn't know what a husband or wife is. Didn't know they were, that you're supposed to be qualified as one. So many people just get married just because. There's so many marriage stories that are just because. Well, you know, we were, we were you know, things were going well, so I proposed. What? Like, you know, like whoever you marry, that's a political stance. You know? Well, you know, so many different things. I was going through whatever as far as marriage is concerned, you know, uh, or I'm sorry, you know, we were, uh, I, I just I just didn't want to be alone anymore. He wanted me and I didn't really think he was a great husband or this and that or whatever, but I, I didn't want to be alone. <laughs> oh, it's our pleasure, Deja. Thank you. Right? I remember. <laughs> um, you know, so many different things that we're going through, right? And it's like, it's it's like it's a lot of people just doing just because protect this like protect us if you're not doing things that will protect us if you're not doing things that will first protect you so you can protect us it's gonna fall it's gonna crumble once again Yashua said which one of you would first build a tower right and wouldn't first consider the cost which one of you would build a tower and wouldn't first consider the cost 
He said, that's interesting. I was raised to be a wife, as was my mother and grandmother. That's Yeah, that's amazing. That's great. You know, that's awesome. You know, and, and maybe you need to be out here teaching people because a lot of us didn't get that. We even grew up in homes with mothers and fathers, and mothers and fathers didn't teach us about what they were doing. There's times where uh, things are going on, and I stop my son, and I say, son, this stuff that's going on right now, I want you to see why I did what I did, right? There's time, like, I make sure that he's opening doors for his mom, right? He's not just holding his mom's hand, no. Like, he, if, if I'm not there, I know he's opening doors. And my wife has seen it, and guess what she does now? So even when she's with him, she will stop when she gets to a door to make sure that he opens the door. And he knows mom goes in first. And so guess what? Now when he's around even his, 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 his um, female cousins, right, who are trained to be queens themselves, right, when he's with them, they're going to go in first. He's going to open the door for them, right, on his level, you know. Uh, he, I'm protecting him now, right, because watch this. If I protect him from those things now, if I teach him those things now, what's going to happen is he's going to get older and it's going to protect him from heartbreak. You know why? Because if he goes, if he's been trained, that hey, this is how you treat your. This is how you treat a wife, and this is what a husband's supposed to be. And some girl tries tries to say, okay, I'm gonna be your wife or whatever. He takes her out, and she's like, well, why are you doing this? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing this or whatever? And that's her first response. He might tell her. He might, but he also say, hey, you know what? I don't know if you're ready to be a wife yet, and I don't know if I'm strong enough to be able to teach you those things yet. If you're willing to listen to me or whatever. And so maybe we can be friends and stuff still and revisit this thought process, this mindset later on. But I don't want to mess either one of us up. Right? I mean, heck, you know, I'm be honest with you. We told y'all this. You know, We're we not even above, um, I don't know if we'll ever do it, but we ain't above, um, you know, uh, you know, setting up marriage. Oh, he young. <laughs> you know, I don't know if it'll happen that way. I don't think it will. He's going to have to be part of the process. We're going to let him agree with stuff. But, you know, we we have children in this position where they don't know what's going on, right? People get married five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten times. I'm not even exaggerating. You know, look at the people who are supposed to be successful. Your Howard Stearns, your well, Howard Stern hasn't been married five, six, seven times. I'm sorry. Uh, what's his name? Uh, is it Larry King? Larry King. How many times has he been married? You know, um, Jennifer Lopez, right? And uh, what was crazy to me is, is I remember. <laughs> I, isn't Jennifer Lopez in some movie where she got to be with Owen Wilson? Like, where they do that at, right? But nevertheless, like, yeah, she got to be some movie where Owen Wilson is like the white savior and all this stuff for her. And um, and she's she was out there talking about, yeah, go see my movie about marriage, this and that, something like that. I don't know what it's called, but yeah, make sure you check out the movie about marriage. And it's like, hold up, like, aren't you the same person that's been divorced how many times and been in how many relationships, per, like, publicly? And keep coming out publicly talking about this one's going to be the one? That's that's the poster child for marriage in this society. We got to protect us. We don't need to be part of that. We're like the poster child for a successful marriage. You're supposed to go watch a movie and get an idea of what marriage is based off of somebody that we know can't even stay married. And then it's going to be in a relationship in the movies or just in the in the commercials. You can see it doesn't make any sense, the relationship. Minister Tam said, very political. I support my husband's mission, the mission of Yahweh has for him and our children. Amen. And if that's the mindset you have, if he decide, if, 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 or if you decide, because really marriage is not on the most high, it's on us. We have free will, right? But nevertheless, like how we decide to do that is, is within us, right? Uh, but, you know, yeah. Um, you know, if you have that mindset, if there is a husband, physical husband that presents himself, you know what he is. Yeah, she's been in a lot of movies like that. Maybe that's her jinx. I don't even know if it's a jinx. I think she just, uh, I get what you mean, you know. Uh, you know, maybe, but, you know, to be in all those movies, but, you know, or maybe I guess you could say the spirit of that and her not really being in those things, you know, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff that they put out there. And remember, all these things that they put out there for a reason. They're making political statements with all these movies. Yeah, I, yeah, Owen Wilson, definitely the wrong guy. That's the first thing that struck me and my wife. We were looking at each other like, Owen Wilson? <laughs> like, like, Owen Wilson? Yeah, marriage is very honorable. Steve Harvey, which, by the way, this marriage that he's in now, seems like that's a sham. You know, but they play it very well, but it seems like that's a sham. You know? Could be wrong, though. That's his own personal life, so let me not speak like that's factual. I'm just, that's why I said seems like. Hmm. 
Just don't things do things just because that please ask y'all for guidance in your selection process. Amen. And by the way, if it's if you're asking him for guidance, guess what? It's gonna be his selection process. You have the right to do whatever you want. However, if you will be obedient to his selection process, you're gonna find what you're looking for anyways. And he's gonna find, since he who finds a wife finds a great thing, he's gonna find it anyways. He said, How was us getting married before government made contract? Made Oh, oh, okay. Well, basically, marriage is sex, sex is marriage. Real simply, you were taught from a child what marriage was. Boys were raised in threes. Girls were raised similarly, but not exactly the same. But basically, we raised in threes. The first three years, you're a boy. You're a girl. Next three years after that, you start weaning them from mother. Um, you know, because whatever dad does, you're going to have to do. Now, the girl, she's going to be around mother, so her, you start having a little bit of separation here. Um the next three years after that, the son is going to be the father's apprentice. So the whatever daddy does, you do. And so you're going to learn everything, including being a husband from him, watching him. Right. Uh, or not everything, but you're going to learn a lot. The next the, that same period of time for the daughter, she's going to be around mom. Next three years after that. Right. And if you're with us, that means around like to ages 10 through 12. So next three years after that. Basically, you're learning reading and writing and things that are going to get used to. You're focusing in on those things. And so is the girl. But you're being taught from dad. You're being taught from mom. Right. Every once in a while, there may be some switching on things, you know, because it's not a separation, but we're all in the same house. But, you know, you're focusing in different places. You have different responsibilities. Right. From there, next three years after that, that's why they do that whole um, bar mitzvah thing or matzvah thing that they do. Um, because that basically means bar, son, um, matzvah like coming of legal age basically right so being legalized so the next from ages 13 through 15 now all of a sudden you're teaching them how to be a man once he learns how to be a man ages 16 through 18 then you're teaching them how to be a husband age, right and you're teaching her how to be a, a woman right uh, 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 um now ages um 16 through 18 you're teaching him how to be a husband and what a wife is you're teaching her how to be what a wife is and what a husband is um ages 19 through 21 you're teaching them how to be a parent how to be a father or how to be a mother and then as far as the daughter she stays under um the father in the father's house because the father even if she gets a job and does things or whatever she's still going to be in her father's house under the father because the father is her protection protect us he is her protection so now that he's her protection, she stays underneath that, right? Because she's supposed to feel secure, right? And until she gets married, right? That's why you walk down the aisle. Remember, you, so you've been in enough marriages or you've seen it or you've imagined it, whatever, enough times. You know, you walk down the aisle, father or the father figure walks with the bride all the way through or meets her somewhere, brings her up, and, then, and somebody says, who gives this woman a way to be wed? The father is supposed to be able to say, I do, and gives her to the son. Right, or his son, his son-in-law, and gives him to this guy who's going to marry her because the father can't really marry her all the way. He can't lay down with his own daughter, right? So he's never really been married to her, but he's been her father. This guy who's going to be married to her is going to take on the what the spirit, the the spiritual needs of her as a father. He's going to be underneath the father because he's married to the father, so he's going to be underneath a father. Therefore, he's going to be a father figure through being a wife to the father, right? Because the father gives instruction, according to um, Proverbs chapter 1, the father gives instruction, the mother lays down the law. So he's just simply going to lay down the law of the father's instruction. So she's going to go from basically one father figure or one father, her physical father, to a father figure spiritually, right? And he's supposed to now be the same thing. Everything that father was, he's supposed to be that and more. The places that the father, her natural father can't go through, uh, or her physical father can't go through with her because he can't lay down with her and can't cross certain boundaries. This spiritual type father figure is supposed to be able to do so while at the same time making sure they are one. It's a very balanced thing out, right? That's what's supposed to be happening. Now, that's not really culturally how we would have done it. We wouldn't have walked down the aisle like that and everything. But that's why they do those things that they put in place. They put them in place because they actually have some biblical semblance and some bi biblical significance. So all that's supposed to go down. So you teach them how to be children whatever and then once that happens the daughter she stays under the protection of her father until it's time for her to become one with her husband and therefore now her husband also becomes the spiritual father right meanwhile the son he gets his inheritance then 
right? The father doesn't give the daughter the inheritance because when they get married, the father will actually make sure he pays for the ceremony and he will make sure that he then gives a gift to the family. That's 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 going to be his inheritance. The son is given to his his inheritance after age 21 and then he goes out to make sure that he takes all the lessons he's learned to start making sure he gets his land, his home, his business, all these things together. And then eventually when he finds a wife and they discuss being husband and wife, they find out they're righteous for each other. They go check it out with their families. Their families are on board. They go and actually get engaged. That means that they get a license to get married. They're not. See, we get. We, you walk down the island, then you go get a get the marriage license, right? And technically, you're kind of sort of doing the same thing. But you would get a license to get married, and to get married means now you must consummate. Once you consummate then you're married. So, but you would get, in our culture, you would get a license to get married. You would get a license to be a fiance. And then she would go back to her father and would start going to the Wailing Wall and would start getting ready to lose her virginity and her chasteness because she's supposed to become one with somebody else and would even grieve it. When they would go to the Wailing Wall, they would even grieve, um, you know, that was more of a, a tradition, you know, but nevertheless, like they would even grieve losing their virginity. I'm not going to be one. I'm going to give myself to somebody else. I'm not going to be just this person within myself. I'm not going to be under my father's house and protection and all these things. They would actually go and, and grieve in the mountains. Meanwhile, he would go back to his father's house and he would start preparing um, what's called a mansion. He would build on an add on to the house. That's what a mansion was, is that somebody came, there's a house already, you add on some for your family so that you can bring the wealth back in. So that when you get married, you can be with your family and the wealth, but you can also have your own land. Which is why what we're doing with YLP 83, Yas Land Project 83, we're looking at getting the land. We also want to make sure, though, that it helps people to be able to get their own. It's a very um, Israeli or Israelite or, or, or Hebrew kind of context. You said only people who don't love themselves don't want to be alone? I mean, maybe. I think that you should be able to deal with being alone, but people have different love languages. You know, you have a love language where, you, you know, your love languages allow you to be alone. Some people like physical touch. Some people like quality time. Some people like quality time, but don't like it that much. <laughs> We're all different beings, right? I'm an introvert, so once I finish here, I'm trying to find anywhere I can, at least for an hour or so, like, can I just be by myself? Right, like I'm immediate as soon as I get off here. Um, before I even start getting into videos, before I start getting into things like that, I've started scheduling things back a little late later the last few months because I literally I go before I start getting into all this and getting into everybody else's business and having to make all these calls and do all this first things first. I got some me time, you know, but then I'm fine. But some people are like, Yo, I need two days by myself, right? Well, if you get married with somebody, be be aware of that too. You know, you're going to have to be able to speak different love languages. So he might, that person might be able to say, okay, for two days, as, as far as stuff, you can be by yourself. I'm cool with it, whatever. But guess what? If my stuff is, is quality time, then guess what? After your two days is up, you're going to need to give me at least a day of, like, we're going to need to go somewhere. We don't need to hold hands. We're going to need to be out in public. <laughs> you know? You know, but everybody, so that's why, you know, it's it's not a, it, it's it, there are guidelines, there are laws to protect your rights, but everybody's created to be different. And I think that's something we got to understand too. And protecting us, protect the differences. That's why I tell you guys, um, the thing that blessed my wife and I in our marriage more than anything else is that I learned that she is her and I am me and we're not supposed to be the same. We're not supposed to be the same. Matter of fact, we can't be the same. Equality is a myth, right? Especially as far as human beings are concerned. There are no two human beings that have ever been created that are equal. Anybody that tells you different is somebody that's looking for your vote. <laughs> right? Basically, there's no such thing as equality. Right? So, all of us are different. Yeah, dowry. Yeah. We were talking about that. We were actually talking about that not too long ago. Talking about if we, if we were still thinking about that. And trying to figure out how we can make sure Solomon's a, great, uh, uh, a part of the process. You know, well, we were thinking about it. I ain't going to hold you. <laughs> you know, he says, so how do we unmarry those from our past? Um, you know, first of all, prayer, chasteness, you know, one of the things that um, sometimes it's hard because a lot of us were with somebody and then we immediately went to somebody else, you know, a week, two weeks passed, whatever. Sometimes we literally just went from one person to the next. Um, and that's why we broke up with the last person. You know, there's a lot of different things, but it, it depends on what your situation is, but it's about being chased. It's about being the term, I don't, you know, we use this very Latin term, virtus, or virtuous, you know, 
nevertheless, the virtue is just how you represent. Okay, you know, become the virtuous woman again. Um, become a husband again. You know, pre premarital husband, right? Become a premarital wife. Go do what you need to do. You know, um, pray about those things. Um, eat healthier, things like that, right? There are certain things that you probably had to deal with because there's certain memories that will always be attached. Unfortunately, it is what it is. Um, until the day you die, it is what it is. Your memory is about things. But, you know, I've been in relationships before I met my wife. My wife's been in relationships before she's met me. It doesn't mean that um, when I'm out somewhere, I'm always thinking of somebody else. Or if I'm ever thinking about anybody else for that matter. And she's not doing that at all either. And matter of fact, we've had conversations about past experiences with other people some people are are so not over their experiences that they can't even talk you know like we've been able to say yeah you know when i was in this relationship with somebody for they did do this and blah blah and i learned from this you know because it's we learn from them it's part of what we went through so um you know there's a lot of different things that are there you know in that i'm sorry tamika you said she wouldn't even teach me how to cook i was adopted at six never learned how to be a wife from my senior mother it's a tyler perry is now a man that came out the closet dressing like a woman to complete with a real one. Yeah, I mean, I'll leave that alone. We don't have enough time for that one. <laughs> you said J-Lo. Oh, that's why you were saying that J-Lo doesn't want to be alone. I'm sorry, it's out of order. Okay, am I going backwards? Sounds like I'm going backwards. All my life, I've only been in two relationships, one to get right next time around. Yeah, there you go. You know, I've I can count even if you want to call it dating and stuff like that. I think I can count on like it's either five or six. Like it, it depends on what you count as dating. You know, like if you count like what is it, uh, um, homecoming and stuff like that. I think I only went to one. And oh no, maybe I went to two, but I only went to one with somebody. You know, yeah, being delivered from soul ties as well, most definitely. So your husband gave you sabbatical time, had to had to slow walk with him to trust the process. Mm hmm. Like that, need my own time. Yeah, you know. So my wife would tell you, she'd be like, sometimes it sounds, she, she's told y'all in some of the lines she's been on, it feels like sometimes I'm trying to hide. <laughs> like, I'm not really trying to. I just like to be able to go to a space that's mine, you know. And. Because we're traveling a lot and we usually have a lot of people around us. Like, you know, it's difficult sometimes to find it. But, I, you know, if it's something that I need, you'll find it. You don't have to even put it on somebody else, you know. So, you know, like, um, like there's there's been times that I've gone outside and laid down um, a mat or something, like, on the ground. And I just laid down outside. Like, but I was able to get time. So, you know, you'll find those things. And you've got to be, be able to speak your love language. But if somebody really loves you truly, they'll make sure that they find out a way to speak your language. You know, they will. They will. So, anyways, though, thank you all for being on. I appreciate you all. Thank you for spending time with us today. I am going to take my leave. Thank you uh, for being on with us today as we talked about Protect Us. And um, I'm excited about what the Most High is continuing to say to us as we continue to grow as a people. Um, thank you so much for your support. Thank you so much for your support as far as time, talent, effort, energy, phone calls you've been making, resources. I know a lot of people have been excited because they've been hearing from us on a regular basis. We're going to continue to make sure that that's happening for you all. And we're grateful for the opportunity that you guys would allow us to contact you, speak into your life, spend time with us. Uh, Patreon fam, um, you know, I promise right after this, while I'm getting a little time, I'll at least make sure that I upload the stuff we're behind on so you guys will be caught up um also patreon fam don't forget my head is just floating <laughs> uh patreon fam don't forget that tonight um seven o'clock p.m eastern new york time we're gonna try to start off with having that um that live for you guys it's just for patreon family only so if you're on patreon make sure that you go you look up the picture that has soc um written in the sand on it and in the in the comment section it has the link for the video so make sure that you go look that up and um we're excited grateful and thankful for an opportunity to do that it's just going to be pretty much q a today so um we're just going to start it off try things out see how things work use this as a test and from this point on a lot of the questions that you guys have as a patreon family i'll try to have some kind of answers for them during a live um session that'll just be for you all only so we thank you we appreciate you ladies don't forget saturday fast approaching so be ready for the women's meeting, 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern New York time. Those who have basic Hebrew with us this evening, um, I look forward to talking to you guys and seeing you guys later tonight. 
Uh, we will be back on live at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern. So the way it's going to work, those who are on Patreon, we're going to start on live 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern New York time at 8 o'clock p.m. Those who want to join us on TikTok, you can join right in. OK, so uh, but those who are on Patreon, you'll start with us at 7 and go until. All right. So thank you all so much. I appreciate you all. I appreciate the King, Queen, and each and every one of you. Um, as always, um, I'm thankful to the Most High for my wife, the Honorable Maya. Um, you can follow her on TikTok, YouTube, her website, and Pinterest at Bloom and Flourish. Not A-N-D, but the letter N, Bloom and Flourish. Remember that the tank of the month is Mucus Detox. And um, thank you for supporting us, supporting her business, also supporting what she does as far as the nonprofit with ChangingLinesInitiative.org. Um, we're thankful and grateful. Some of you have even been helping us to gather some clothes together for the next coat drive coming up. So we're thankful and grateful for you all as well. Everybody working together as one. And we look forward to continuing to do great things with each other. So um, thank you so much. And um, we want you to um, also remember once again, um, April 15th is fast approaching. April 11th is when you need to have your lamb together. If you're interested in us doing what we did last year, which is putting together a little Passover package for you, getting the lamb, you know, getting the bitter herbs, things like that. Some people just didn't want to do it or didn't know how to do it or were afraid. You know, we'll be doing a package for you, getting the lamb, you know, getting the bitter herbs, things like that. Some people just didn't want to do it or didn't know how to do it or were afraid. You know, we'll be talking a lot about this stuff going up, going on. And we're going to be having some reminders being sent out through our contact, um, those who are contacting people, um, you know, starting um, next week, especially. We're going to try once a week to make sure that we have something going out to you guys. We'll try to make sure that we have some stuff on YouTube and on, um, you know, not just on Patreon, but we want everybody across the board to know about um, Passover and how to prepare. Uh, we are working on making sure we get something together as far as those who've been asking about Sabbath. Just give us a little bit. Be patient. Um, it might take a few weeks, but we're going to try and make sure we have a nice little panel discussion and a lot, a few different people that are able to come on and talk about some things from within the community. We just got to set it up to where, um, everybody can be on because we can't do TikTok with everybody. Like basically we can't, we don't have a set up. It's the way that these systems are set up, these social media set up, they don't really work with each other that well. So it's difficult to have something. So we're just trying to find platforms. We might even do some special stuff where it's, a uh, on a special type of podcast or something like that where we can have you guys coming together. Also, we're excited. We're going to make sure our ministerial staff, especially with Shabbat Shalom and some other things, are going to start being on here more for you guys. Um, and sometimes even on the live um, being on. So um, we're excited about that. You, we can start seeing more people. And I can take a little break from time to time, too. Uh, but we're excited and thankful and grateful for a lot of things that's about to start happening and is already happening, whether it's behind the scenes or where everybody can see it. But we're thankful and we're grateful. We appreciate you all. Um, we look forward to being with you guys again. And please do not just be hearers of this word. Remember, we want to be doers also. So make, make sure that you take time out to be with everybody, to um, love on everybody. Don't forget that next Friday, not this Friday, but the Friday after next. So like not this week, but next week, Friday, we're going to go out to the community, be a blessing to people. And don't forget that not this Sunday, but the following Sunday is when we start taking the leaven out of our home to prepare for uh, Shabbat. So thank you so much. We appreciate you all. As always, it's been Pastor Kofi, Pastor Servant of Christ, where we are always changing lives one mind at a time, of being a voice of the voiceless and speaking the unspoken. And so I have the great privilege and opportunity and responsibility of being in front of you all again. Please remember, as always, that you are loved, you are necessary, you are majestic, you are fearfully and wonderfully made in you, which is all of us working together, will be the reason why people who are in this system no longer have to be of it. Shalom, family. Peace.